To the big one, gentlemen. Thank you, Pete. Thank Thanks, Peter. One. Grand final nerves. Yes. We've got a few butterflies. Yeah, which way do you think it'll go, Sam? Will that be important? Who settles down the quickest? I think so. I think there's a wonderful array of experience on both sides, but I just feel it'll be a fantastic game. And when you consider the array of talent on display here this afternoon, I really believe it'll be one of the memorable grand finals in VFA history. What about you, Len? Uh, Sam thinks that Williamstown are a show. Do you give them a chance? I think they are a chance only if they play a brilliant game. And uh, Coburg are going to be doing the same thing from start to finish. They've done that all year. And I think uh, percentages tell you that the team that plays the more disciplined football consistently are the ones that will ultimately win. And I think that'll be Coburg. They are a very well coached team. And if they're told to be disciplined early, uh, they seem to be able to, to be capable of uh, retaining that instruction, even in the pressure cooker atmosphere of a grand final. As the Captains come together, Brad Nimmo, number 17 for Coburg, and Barry Round, and tossing the coin, a Williamstown coaching legend, Wally Carter, who coached them for three premierships in a row back in the 50s, and it looks like it's Coburg that have won the toss. Peter Cameron, central umpire, shakes hands with Wally Carter. He's wearing the yellow and blue of Williamstown, no doubting about uh, which way his allegiance is lying, though he's tossed the coin in Coburg's favour. Will that uh, play a part, Sam? I think so. Peter, as you mentioned earlier, it is windswept Windy Hill living up to its name, and I think a side that can get a bit of an advantage with the aid of the breeze, it could be four or five goals. If they get away to a good start, it might be very difficult to peg it back. Well, they're going to the school end. Len, you played a lot of football out here at Windy Hill. Um, a difficult ground to play on, not a big ground. And, uh, of course, the, although there are a lot of players out there that have uh, had a run with Essendon uh, in uh, VFL or reserves, for uh, that matter, they might take a while to adapt to this. Well, I think it will. I think, the, uh, as we're looking at the windsock there, Peter, the problem with this ground is very rarely gets favoured deliberately one way or the other with the wind. The wind usually bustles down to that uh, city end uh, forward pocket, which makes the distance of the kicking both ways it usually carries, but it's the judgement and the skill that's the hard thing to adapt to. So who are you going for, Len? Coburn. Sam? I have a slight inkling to Williamstown. OK. Evenly divided up here. Let's go down to our boundary line commentators for the day, John Bell and Ross Booth. Good afternoon, gents. Oh, good afternoon, Peter, and good afternoon, everyone. Well, John Bell, a bit of a surprise decision, uh, the way the uh, sides have chosen to kick. I'll tell you, yeah, one thing straight away, Ross, uh, Willie was talking about it in the, in the rooms. I think they'd be very pleased to be running with the breeze in the first half, uh, first quarter. A great chance to get some goals on the board uh, very early in the game. Very uh, relaxed atmosphere down in the Willie uh, changing room. Uh, just the normal routine leading into the big game. Uh, you saw the banner, seeking revenge. They all know they were here last year and are desperate to go out there and uh, defeat Coburg today. Very relaxed indeed, and uh, I think we're going to see a very big performance from Williamstown today, especially for Barry Round. Thanks, John. Well, Coburg room, by contrast, not relaxed with Phil Cleary. It never is. We deserve the flag, he said. He thinks uh, Rickman will be cut out of the game by Bassett, and there's going to be a lot of pressure from the Coburg players in these early ten minutes. Thank you, Ross and John. Well, that's interesting. Uh, as Len said, the wind very tricky, and the umpires in charge this afternoon. Two men with six VFL grand finals between them. Rowan Soares has the ball to start the match and Peter Cameron let's doing go, their first the VFA Grand Final. The ball, right and the ball is the objective, say the umpires. And both of these teams are ball playing football sides. I think we're in for one of the great Grand Finals. Umpire Soares puts it down and it's Coburg through Wiedemann winning the first tap. Rennitz taken out of it by Smith. That's Swan. Number 13 for Williamstown. Langan. Handball smothered. Taranto coming through. He's aptly named the tank. Here's Kakua. Steaming away from McTaggart. Kenny takes him down. Professional free kick. He'd be quite happy, Peter Kenny, to have held up the racehorse, Billy Kakua. So, the Coburg think they're going with the win. Williamstown think they're going with it. We'll soon find out. As Taranto goes for home, wasn't a wise option, I don't think, but reynoldson has got back there. Well, he'd made the lead and was a good 20 metres ahead of Willis's opponent. Had to double back. And Greg Reynoldson, who kicked the two ceiling goals in last year's grand final, a chance to draw first blood for the Lions. Stay out! Just 20 metres out directly in front. He's got it. A goal just after a minute. And the pumped up Lions draw first blood. 
Yes, Peter, the ideal start for Coburg. So they'd be happy with that. I was just thought prior to the game, I was in a quandary as to who to select for the simple reason that they've got marked contrasts in terms of their strengths. Williamstown, as we know, have a brilliant forward line complemented by a hard-working defence as opposed to Coburg, who rely predominantly on their brilliant defence and complemented by a hard-working forward line. That was a great start, and it's good to see Reynolds, who's been down a little bit, getting wow. first use. Wiedemann getting it to Gumley. Reynolds, Norm Goss medalist last year in the grand final. Touched off the boot, so McTaggart knew he had to get rid of it quickly. Pastore to Smith, who's slow, hasn't played a lot of senior football this year. Reynolds getting it forward. Not a good bounce for Doyle. Well taken, Danny Del Rey. That'll give him a bit of confidence. Gumley meets it strongly. And McTaggart looks to be in a bit of trouble behind this pack for Williamstown. He's down on hands and knees. It's not McTaggart. The physical stuff. Smith. And Smith is it after that. Well, McTaggart also, he's shaking his head, Ross, as he goes back. There's a free kick for Brad Nimmo, the Lion captain. Nimmo into the breeze go the Lions. The captain and centre half back. Ball holding up there. Langan in good position. From the back comes Murphy with the spoil. Rennett's played a brilliant grand final last year. Best on ground over to Ingram. The Bear. Oh, he's in trouble. Rennett's in support. To the point of the square. One and one. Reynolds at the back. Willis in front position. And Billy Swan. The centre man clears for the Seagulls. Looks out there for Gould. Within Kakur. He's tackled without it. And uh, Brett Gould does well. See the ball really carry the breeze. Over Lindsay Carl's head, through comes Gary Sheldon. Right heart of the footy. Sam, an opportunity there for Ingram if he had a left foot. Mm. Well, he has got strength on both sides of the body, Len, but I think he just took his chance of running around. He felt he might have been able to get, a, get around his opponent, but you're right, he should have been on his left foot. Yeah, there's a free kick. Goberg's way. Advantage played. Up towards Reynoldson with Willis. Murphy in good position with Ingram. And Len, I guess we've both been here before, and it's isn't it crucial the initial 10 minutes of a grand final? Players settling down, nerves, adrenaline flowing freely. Yes, the thing you're looking for is for them to take a few good, clean grabs of the ball, get at the ball, go for their first contest as hard as they can. Doyle, dispossessed by Barry Round, the 39-year-old. Over to Willis, the full-back. Up towards Minot. Oh, he's got the fumbles, pressure on. The tank comes into Rando, gets one high. Oh, oh yes. Handball from a free Ross. Well, nice kick. Free kick and handball up. Man's there. Hey, you're on the shoulder. Sorry. Handball. On the defensive 50 metre semicircle for Williamstown. Gumley palmed it down. There's Round. Murphy couldn't get back to take the handball. Gumley made sure of that. So the throw in. About 80 metres around from the Coburg goal. Quite warm, expect a top of 20, and a strong breeze. Conditions are going to tell on these teams. Garzi couldn't take it away, there's Minot. Good long kick, Bassett got the job on Rickman. But it taps, taps. And breaking away from the dangerous full forward there, fine mark. Quickly off to Sheldon, who finds Ede. Alan Ede, vice skipper. Coburg side with not a lot to kick to. Goes in the direction of Ingram. But to go defensive. Here's Smith as he recovered from that early tackle. Ingram will make sure he feels everything today. The desperate Jeff Angwin there, number 22. He's got a little bandage on that left knee. It did blow up a little bit after the second semi-final. He would have been very glad they'd got straight through to the grand final after he... Uh, Looks like missing the rest of the season with that knee injury. He's out there. But we must say how sorry we feel for Peter Darby. The half forward flanker for Coburg is missing his second straight grand final because of a leg injury. He must feel wretched, but I'm sure his teammates could make it up to him here today. Lee, looks like he got a high one there. They look a bit more determined. Yes, they certainly are, Pete. But just on a word on Peter Darby, it is a tragedy. The lad missing his second consecutive grand final. He's one of the brighter lights on the Kovac side. What's he saying there, for Sam? Go for the ball. I think the ball's the object. Wiedemann almost sharked by Carl. But Ross, as Peter mentioned earlier, and Len endorsed his comments, that both sides are ball-playing sides. There's really no 
malice in their makeup. They've just they've got a very, very strong will to make that ball and get that ball. Make it the object. There's a shot with the pack, Windy Hill. There's a free kick there in the back against Reese Lang, and Brett Gould will take it. Both number 32s. Second kick for Gould. And he looks for Delray. There he is at the, now at the back. Over the top came Smith. And there's a lot of pressure, a few packs early in this match. Another free kick right plucked there. out. Going to Brad Nemo. Delray on the mark. There's Sheldon in the back of the picture. Looking to get some run. Out to centre wing. Doyle has to fly. Ooh. Possibly a free kick, not paid. Now there's one. Barry Round signalled it, and Brett Gould gets it. Yes, he was held by Langan, Reese Langan. Lead from Aziz from the pocket. The, the pass comes towards him. Fries for the free. Sheldon's on the ground at the back. So is Bassett. Here comes Rickman, puts the tackle on. A good one. Bassett hits the deck. The ball bounces to a half back flank. Just when we were talking about Ross earlier, there was an example of it about five minutes ago. Williamstown's bogey is going to be that defensive Coburg when Bassett and Sheldon run off. They set up so many forward thrusts, and the Woolly forwards have really got to apply great pressure on them. William and down to Gumley. Rennett steams through. Only two men inside the 50 metre semicircle. Joined by Ingram. Tap for Reynoldson. Howlett goes down, but he put the body in there, and he'd be happy to see it over the boundary line. Kakua felt that one. Viewers will remember Rennitz was the man of the match last year. The sunglasses, Chris Burton, the injured Chris Burton, had a cartilage removed during the week. He'll be back next year. But Taggart squares it. Alone in the paddock, Glenn Murphy. From centre half back. Looks up. He's only got Garzi to fly for. Uh, Angwin coming in from the side. Courageous mark. And on they go. Allison to Taranto. There's a great mark from Angwin. Now to Rennitz. The pass coming towards Reynoldson. Gets away from Willis. Just great skills, Ross, isn't it? Really Sam, composed. Sam, one of the important things that I've admired about Coburg this year is that they've got, they've got great team vision, aren't they? They're looking to see the constructive thing. You see big Taranto there pointing to get the ball over to Allison. Now the breeze from left to right across the screen. A difficult shot at goal. He has the one goal so far, and you can see the breeze blow that across the face. It's quite strong. No, well, snuck through, Ross. Almost a very bad vision, Sam. Well, I'm see, that's with, I've got proof of vision either, Ross. I thought it went across the face of the goal. What a start by Coburg, and Reynolds in particular. This will give him a lot of confidence. No problem. And I just felt previously, Len, Coburg, who have got good vision, and we saw Murphy bring the ball up. He virtually kicked it when he could have ran the ball another 40 or 50 metres. Swan waiting underneath it. Langan heard the call from Rennitz. Ricochet to Gumley. Found a corridor. Again, it's an open Coburg forward line. Left by Doyle for Allison. Murphy down. Reynoldson puts himself in. Murphy. Out to Pastore and Swan away. The Seagulls looking for a bit of system. Delray. Coming in with Sheldon and he's got it through to Angwin. They're teaming well. Flip it over the top is the call. Rennitz is the man. Away from Pastore. Running over the top of it, Willis. But he's got some help from Murphy and it's back on on centre wing. Yeah, Brad Nemo and Danny Del Rey having an exchange of words. And then a couple of others got into it. Yes, Jack Aziz is there. And Robbie Evans. But Coburg in attack. Round from behind. They're under pressure. Murphy. Great start by Coburg. Two goals on the board. Thumped away by Rennett. Good play. Swan. Oh, that's pressure. The penalty kick to taken to be taken by Jeff Angren. Looked like Ross that uh, Brad Nemo had his number taken there by the emergency umpire. You're on the mark there, stay there. So the Coburg captain and centre half back reported Wiedemann's a bad kick. Murphy, that's not good either. A lot of pressure. Delray runs hard of the football. So does Angwin. Good class. Smith through. 
Well done, Grant Smith. Wobbly kick. Will it get through those defenders? No. Gary Sheldon clears beautifully out to Wiedemann on centre wing. Mark Wiedemann loves playing big games in grand finals. Doyle. What Rennett or Reed did it on his own. Again, only four men this time inside the semicircle. Allison was backing up Reynoldson. But a very desperate Lindsay Carl there. Pulls himself up number 15 for Williamstown, who has had that left knee drained this week. A fluid build up there. It'll be interesting to see how he lasts out this game. The Rover. It's Artie Garzi for Williamstown. And there he goes. Lindsay Carl. Too much pace. Need to look too bad there. As is. Backing beautifully right, right, into right. Evans. Right there. Now for the first time, they get it up in the direction of Rickman. Yes. Oh. Peter Cameron doesn't pay the 50-meter penalty. Oh, but that's the sort of football that they are looking for, the Seagulls. Move it quickly to the fast-leading Rickman. I know what you're going to say, Sam. Not. Got, to let them, really got to let the man right, contest. Right. That's the name of the game, Sam. Well, I thought there was plenty of contest. I thought there was a little bit too much contest, Len. Could have been 50. Well, that's the angle. Distance won't be any worry. The accuracy uncharacteristically right off from Ian Rickman. Sam, one of the things that uh, is great, and it's been the first time this year, that we've got two VFL Premiership umpires, six premierships between them, doing this grand final, which is a great asset to the game, isn't it? I don't think there'll be anything lacking in that department, Len. Out to half-back. Big Barry, well roved by Andrew Howlett, on his wrong foot, his right foot, into McTaggart, awkward bounce, pressured by Gumley. Well done, Steve Gumley, he's still there. Now Rennitz. Chips it towards Langan. Howlett's with him, but the boundary line is too close. And Len, the duel between Round and Wiedemann will have a big bearing on this game too, I suspect. It's going to have a big bearing. I've been surprised at few of the, just the personal duels they've had, the strength of Wiedemann. He's, uh, he surprised me with the amount of strength he's got. Round thumps that one forward. Cameron Doyle out on the defensive flank. Ingram oh, gets unloaded, still not out of play. Howlett rides him into the ground. And Ingram gets the free kick. Sam, they're undisciplined acts, aren't they? Well, I was about to say, Len, you're right. Indiscriminate endeavour to tackle that. That was very poor execution. We've played 14 minutes. Two straight goals for Coburg. They lead Williamstown, who are yet to trouble the scorer. Away goes Centerman Gumley. All the Rovers are with Coburg. This is Brian Allison. First minor score comes up. 13. Coburg, Williamstown, yet to score. Wait. Willis. Ah. This one in short from the middle. This one's not going to go out in the full. Garzi drops it. The Tirano tries to take him out of play. He's still there. Minette in support. Up to Pastore. Oh, he half waited for that. Now Delray gets around Nimmo nicely. Looks for Aziz. Good spoil by Evans. Rickman sends Bassett over the line with a, nip, a nudge. Interesting duel, Ross. Bassett and Rickman. Well, the last time they met Sam, Rickman didn't kick a goal on Adrian Bassett. But uh, it was Rickman that cut loose in the second quarter last year here at Windy Hill with two goals that got Willie really right back into things. That's Del Rey battling single handedly in the ruck. And things have just settled down a little bit after the opening. 15 and a half minutes into the first quarter. Williamstown, a real chance here to get on the scoreboard. Wiedemann goes towards Angwin. Pretty hard to knock off the ball, Jeff Angwin, even with a diggy knee. Langan plays basketball. One thing about Coburg, sorry, Ross. They have got the numbers down in that forward line very quickly to congest that, haven't they? Ross Langan is a phys ed student at the Philip Institute, so he probably does have a bit of basketball experience. Bassett's kick ricochets to Minot. Rickman away from Langan. Evans. Well, a big injury cloud over him as he gives it to Rennett, who lost it. McTaggart. 
away from Doyle. And there's Garzi. Tries to give himself a bit of look at the goals. He's made it difficult. Nimmo. Good work from Doyle. Had to stand his ground. And there to the centre wing. Well, Williamstown there. Murphy the mark. He's a big basketball fan as well. Glenn Murphy. Michael Jordan fan as he bombs it up to half forward. They didn't judge it. Behind the Packers, Carl. We saw Rickman calling for it. And he's duly received it. Point where you are. The distance won't be the worry here again, Peter. Point where you are. Well, directly in front from 45 metres, Ian Rickman, the competition's leading goal kicker. He's kicked 18 goals so far in the final series and has 122 for the season. Williamstown's first kick by the spearhead, and the difference is seven points in favour of Coburg. Just a sheer delight, Len, isn't he, to watch him kicking? We've said it a number of times during the course of the year, but he's just a superb kick. He's deliberate about what he does. That's the thing that I like about him. And he knows that his goal is to kick the goal, where too many fellas just take it as a casual part of their game, and they run in with no real deliberate effort. It's just you can see the difference when you get people like that, and we've got people... You know, the likes of Brownless and Ablett in the league footy where they're deliberate with their kicking, the same as Rickman is. So they get believe the they can kick it. That's right. Well, yeah. well, need, Williamstown needed well, that goal. They were sort of um, had the ball down there, not getting any results. So that's important for them. Yeah, 53 possessions to 35 so far, favouring the Lions. Brown gets the Seagulls forward. Out comes Sheldon. As is, is there. Good strength by Jack Aziz. Down he goes. Play goes on. Rickman with Bassett. <laughs> oh, good effort by Garzi. And brilliantly done, Adrian Bassett. To half back. They're not out of trouble yet, though. Rennett's put under pressure. Good pressure from the Williamstown forwards. By the free kick going to Jeff Ingram, another one. Trip. Run. They work it clear. This is Eid. The roving jewels are interesting. Garzi being held in check, but I notice Lindsay Carl starting to break clear. He put in a good shepherd too there as Rakavolis. And again, players having trouble judging it. Behind the packs, Murphy, caught by Allison. Tries to lift him over the ropes. Interesting the position to see Garzi standing out here waiting for that ball to be gained in possession to get it out wide to him. Yes, he's added about seven and a half back. That's he, number 27. Follow over Carl on the bottom of the pack, or was it Swan? It was Swan. Kick Barry too high, one there. Too high. Your kick's up. Have a Allison kick. to take the free kick. Accidental, mate. He was going the ball. Too high. Right, well, those papers might just yeah, sit. Confusion running in his head as to what he should do in this shot for goal. Each individual piece seems to be going in a different direction. He'll line up from 35 metres. It's about a 50 degree angle. Brian Allison. That was very deliberate and perfect. He really thought about his kicking then into a very tricky breeze. And their third goal. It's been a tremendous start by Coburg Ross. There's Len uh, eight free kicks to two in favour of Coburg, and there was one of them. Yes, well, I, I think that that's high. fair enough because the first 10 minutes, they were certainly the blokes going for the balls, going for the ball. And I think that's if you go for the ball, you'll get the results. One interesting thing, Sam, there I heard Peter Cameron say, Don't go over the mark, please. A few people wouldn't believe you'd speak like that, would they? No, not Peter, but he's. Back, thanks. Very precise and concise, I might add, in his directives. He's usually a bit more descriptive. <laughs> Nemo, oh, he's... He marked it. I think he had every right to, too, Peter. Ross, I'm sorry. Must have been a touch there. Peter Cameron, the bounce down. Wiedemann spoils Nemo. Uh, very difficult to clear from uh, that pack of players. 
both sides throwing themselves in. Peter Cameron to do it the third time. Wiedemann number one. He rucks against Delray. Delray a bit early. The old Delray got one high, the so did Nimmo. A lot of pressure there, isn't it, Sam? Certainly is, Ross. It's with finals footballs and in particular grand finals. It's where reputations are made. 13 points the difference in favour of Coburg. We've played 22 minutes. Get it out! Nimmo, not really making much of an effort there. More to go. She is the fourth ball up in the space of 60 seconds. Peter, that's an indication if you look at that. The two last players off the ground were both Coburg players. Bounces 40 metres out from the Williamstown goal. Wiedemann beautifully down to Nimmo. Hand in there from Carl. Gumley went down. Good skills from Rickman. Just took the shot into the post. He's just a dangerous player anywhere within 50, isn't he? Either foot. Superbly skilled, Ian Rickman. Five minutes, please. Thank you. Two goals the difference now. Ian Rickman has scored all the Williamstown points. And there were some players raising arms there to acknowledge the goal as it bent back, but not soon enough. Now from the kick-in, it's gone out of bounds at half-back. Wiedemann battles with Round. Angwin, he's playing very well. Over to Rennett's creative hand pass. Much pressure from Grant Smith. The long one over Ingram's head. Just Tim noticed a player out there, Sam, that hasn't uh, had much impact on the game as he at this stage. No, at this stage, but they'll certainly be looking for him at some stage of the game to play a more prominent role because he's one of their, their leading players. Allison and round goes in. He might have given the free away. A lot of direction of traffic, but Coburg get the free. I think Barry saying there was one that came first before that one from the big fellow. Really back too, son. Thank you. Here is Ede. On centre wing, third possession for the vice captain. Haven't seen much from Ingram as Reynolds and flies, and Willis, his opponent, the fullback, takes the mark. Play going out to the dead side. While Williamstown are in defence, Smith. Sheldon didn't know what was bearing down on him. That was a good mark. Nimmo to the attacking side of the ground. Rennett's eyes on the ball the whole way. And pushing it back, Hallett. Might have been against Langan. Against Langan, that Langan that's right. Andrew Howlett finds Pastore. Oh, I don't know if you can call it nerves or what it was, but it has let Coburg again. He goes for home. Kept in by Reynolds. Now the whistle is very late. Right back, right back. umpire left a long way behind there. I think that'd be one of those goal umpire decisions, wouldn't it? Just give him a little message. Yes, it's only. Uh, not even 10 metres from that behind post. There's Murphy. Garzi spoiled by Sheldon. They had the numbers, Coburg. Four to one there. Away goes Kakua. Beautiful pass. Allison pulls it in as we approach time on. Two goals the difference. This one for Brian Allison. A lot more difficult than his last. Only two or three metres in from the boundary Gary, line. Similar distance. This would be very handy. Won't be a lot of time on play. Seventh possession for the Coburg Rover. Can he make it count? Difference now, 13 points. We've played 25 and a half minutes. First quarter, 89 VFA Grand Final. But the numbers really winning out there for the Lions. Yes, yeah, Sheldon quickly out to Billy Kakur with that blistering pace. Perfect pass to Allison. And there's a strong mark. Kenny. He's been pretty quiet, Peter Kenny. First possession to him into time on first quarter. Thumped away by Evans. Chance for Garzi and Aziz. Oh, and Garzi got a cruel bounce. Aziz left, left it for him. And again, the Coburg defence does well. Gary Sheldon takes it over. Good quarter by Coburg into the breeze. 13-point lead. Ross, to use a tennis term, Williamstown are using or making too many unforced errors, aren't they? Indeed. 
up to the pocket as he's showing courage, but Evan strong at defence. Playing in the back pocket. Oh, he's got the fumbles. He doesn't realise there's no one there. Plenty of time to steady. Back to Evans. Relishing playing in the grand final. Missed last year's under suspension. Out to centre wing. Over Doyle's head. Through comes Kenny. He's got some pace, his back pocket. Oh, the kick's a bad one. Straight to Wiedemann. Not using the ball well, are they, Len? No, they're not uh, taking the opportunities. That's Weed's second uh, mark that he's dropped too, which you would expect a player at his level to take. So it's, it's the pressure, as Sam was talking about earlier. Gives away the free kick. Big Barry in receipt of his first free. It's going to be last man standing, Sam, between those two. I think so, Peter. The 39-year-old Marvel to within 30 metres. Rickman has to go defensive on Bassett. Out it comes to Weed. We're working that loose man now. Wiedemann's handball, not as uh, perfect as Coburg usually deliver. But uh, I think the breeze really having an effect on this first quarter. It's not pretty. Coburg held a 13-point lead. Wiedemann stands his ground, but it's roved by Carl. As is, no, it's Pastore who knocks on to Garzi. And we only played three minutes of time on. Good quarter, well done, all in. 13 point leaders at Coburg quarter time in the 89 VFA Grand Final. All the scoring has been done by three men. For Coburg, Greg Reynoldson has kicked two goals straight, and Brian Allison, one goal, two. While for Williamstown, Ian Rickman has kicked one goal, one. So that's the story at quarter time. I don't think we've learned a heck of a lot from it. Certainly, uh, Still not definite about which end the uh, breeze is favouring in this first quarter. Well, as has been the case right throughout the season, we'll be naming the player of the match at the end of this game. Whoever we select as the uh, player of the game. In fact, it's out of our court today, which is probably just as well. The winner of the Norm Goss medal, whoever he is selected by the VFA state selectors, then they will uh, be the ANA man of the match as well for the day. You put that uh, name along with your name and address on the back of an envelope, get it into the VFA and you could win the $200 viewers prize. As Mrs J Knights did this week from Seaford, Mrs Knights is the uh, winner this week. So it's the selection along with name and address on the back of an envelope, get it into the VFA by last mail on Wednesday. Congratulations Mrs Knights, you uh, correctly named the dual winners last week, Billy Swan and Jack Aziz. But quarter time in the VFA Grand Final sees Coburg 13 points up. Next on Four Corners. After 10 years, the Vietnamese occupation of Cambodia is finally coming to an end. This is the old Cambodia, the Cambodia beyond foreign occupation and the killing fields. A place of exquisite beauty and gentle dignity, a land suspended in time. But with the dreaded Khmer Rouge again poised in the wings, the agony is far from over for these long-suffering people. The question remains, who will fill the vacuum left by the battle-hardened Vietnamese army? Cambodia's foreboding, next on Four Corners. 8.30 Monday, ABC. Help my little girl. You saw her, she was fine. I ducked out for half a minute Patients just to get the... die, Robert, even young ones. What did I miss? We have to advise you there's going to be a coronial inquiry. Every Doctor's Nightmare, GP, 8.30 Tuesday, ABC. Phil Cleary addressing the Coburg troops. Pressure is the call. Barry Round. he seems to be saying. Use the wind there, Sam. Uh, I don't know. It seems to have won that first quarter anyway, even though Coburg on the scoreboard have a 13-point lead. I just think they settled down a lot better in that opening 20 minutes, 
Peter. But really, the vigilance displayed by the Coburg defence was quite freakish in that first quarter. I really believe they generated a lot of the forward thrust. Guys like Nimmo, Sheldon, Bassett, they're not prepared to let go of the ball until they're absolutely tackled. And really, it has paid dividends quite handsomely. And they've put an enormous amount of pressure on Williamstown, who conversely, when they do get the ball in very indiscriminately kick the packs, and they don't have the options that uh, Coburg have, have uh, provided for themselves. Here we see the first goal and a superb overhead mark by Reynoldson. Up yeah. forward was where the question was over Coburg, with Williams not playing, hasn't played uh, a lot lately, so he didn't get the nod up forward. Weatherall's on the bench. They haven't got a lot of uh, known goal kickers up there, but Reynoldson uh, started off well, and up the other end, Bassett doing the job on Rickman. Yes, you're right. And here we see Reynoldson once again, priming in, chiming in for his second goal. But you're right, but they've, they work so well out of defence that they set up the play for their forwards who... They give them a chance in a one-on-one -on -one situation, it's a big plus. Here, Lindsay Carl, who's been working very well, and I feel Kovac have done very well around the packs, as is kept in check by Robert Evans, who's worked hard. Rickman on one of the two or three occasions that he's eluded Bassett. So Lindsay Carl, the ever alert at ground level, finding Rickman. And this was a superb goal from about 50 metres out in this tricky breeze. And it was a badly needed one, their first for the quarter. And only goal for the quarter, I might add. Rickman again here, we've seen hit the post with this left foot snap. This quarter and Rickman's performance could just uh, go a long way to deciding this game. Well, we've said all along when we're discussing Williamstown's plight, Rickman is invariably the key because, you know, he's a proven goal kicker and when they have won games, he invariably kick big bundles. Some of the stats... Look at the handballs, Sam. Well, the handballs, as we said, the, vil the vigilance by the Coburg defence is just quite freakish and they really set up a lot of the play. Free kicks slightly in favour of Coburg, but they have been first to the ball at the base of the packs. And Mark Wiedemann having the better of Barry Round in the rucks so far. Well, listening to the coaches intently have been John Bell and Ross Booth down on the boundary line. Yeah, thank, thanks, uh, Peter. And John, look, uh, Coburg, Phil Cleary, very happy with uh, the efforts of Brad Nemo and Adrian Bassett on uh, Rickman and uh, Delray. Uh, and Coburg are feeling uh, very confident. But really, that wind is very tricky, isn't it? The wind is very fluky. It has concerned Williamstown, but they feel they can go out and kick uh, some goals into it in the second quarter. Very disappointed in the way they've been bottled up on the half-forward line. Just want more players around the ball and a little bit more talking out there for Willie. Yes. Sounds like the basics have been uh, rammed home by coach Barry Round. Gumley got it out only as far as McTaggart. Fended off Langan. Again, it's Coburg that around the ball in numbers. Langan attacked it, as is didn't. There's Taranto, away from Minot. Alan Ede. They steam up forward. Not so open this time for the Lions, going into the breeze. Front position for Willis, but taken by Reynoldson. His third goal. And a goal within 30 seconds for Coburg gives them a lead of 19 points. Excellent goal then by Coburg, Peter, but I think uh, Jack Aziz is getting spoken to, but I think he should be ripped off and given a rest for that lack of effort in approaching the ball. Yes, when you consider, Lynn, the goals appear to be at a premium this afternoon. Three goal margin at this point in time is an extremely handy one, isn't it, in grand finals? It is very hard because it's not only have you got to get back, but you've got to work, you've still got to keep a team like Coburg from scoring it. You're finding it difficult to do. Unlucky a little bit there, Willis. Attacked the ball, couldn't hold it in. And uh, compare that there with Gumley, who made sure he hauled the ball back to his chest there and didn't let it get out. He's outnumbered on the ground there. One of the few times Willie really have had the numbers. Coburg more desperate as round fisted to Taranto. Eid plays tunnel ball with himself. Swan paddles forward. Gumley has the support of Rennitz. This is the difference. And Tim Rennitz is a magician in these situations. Gets clear somehow. Gone too far, says Peter Cameron. Very short distance, I thought that. And a lot of that movement was done tight surface. Round only as far as Evans. Eyes on the ball, and Aziz arrived too late. Here's Angwin. 
Heaps of space. Reynoldson out in front of Willis. Beautiful delivery. Ingram is back in the goal square. Reynoldson knows this spot. He wrapped up the grand final here last year from this very area. 50 metres out, acute angle. Mightn't quite have the legs. Round there on the line. Just over two minutes into the second quarter. And it's a 19-point lead for Coburg. Round a half back. Rennitz and Gumley. Oh, was that in the back? It was. Pastori in the back of Gumley, it looks like. Stephen Gumley has been pretty quiet. Now, this is within kicking distance. Gives himself some more space. Got to land about 10 metres out from the goal mouth. Reynoldson, two hands on it. Still with it. Kick three. Going further away from gold. Nice break. Nine in. Oh, he's caught. Still Coburg with the numbers. At the fall of the ball. Bassett. Taranto. Through comes Lang, and it's tough stuff in the second quarter. Oh, as he's trying to charge his way through. Now by Saw says I'll bounce it. At this point, of the aggression by Jack as is. Gee, if uh, Reynoldson keeps going the way he is, uh, Sam, they might move back. Big Jack back down. I was there. just thinking it was might be a little bit premature, but they've got to be watching that closely. McTaggart, the vice captain, looks out towards Rickman. Evans gives a little nudge. It's out number three to one. No support for Rickman. He doesn't chase very hard either. Taranto, he's got the funnels. The breeze is very tricky. Picked up by Nimmo. Into the middle. Allison knocks McTaggart off the ball. Support from Minot. Sloppy kick. Del Rey. Oh, he's gone. Gets it away. As is. And dropping short to Carl. He's cleaned up. No free. Here's Garzi. Calling for Pastori. But again, the Coburg defence does very well. So it might come out yet. Rickman thought about kicking off the ground. Oh, Ren, it's brilliant. Kicks wide towards Wiedemann and Smith. And the big weed does well, putting pressure on Grant Smith. What a wonderful display by the Coburg defence when they're under pressure to get that ball out of there. And we've said it a number of times when Sadi Ghazi is contained, Williamstown certainly struggled. Round the stronger here. Well, the handball didn't come off and Rennitz. Wobbles it up to Ingram the best of bounces. Murphy's got the pressure on him. Just an indiscriminate handball. And yes. Gould, who I don't think has had a possession, the long sleeve player there. He's got a free kick here. Well, he has three. But uh, he bumped Ingram there into the police horses and somehow has got the free kick. Ken Ingram hasn't really had an effect on the game at centre-half forward as yet. Again, very hard to judge. Nimmo. Reynolds in front position on Willis. Pressure's on Howlett here. Caught by Reynolds. He acknowledges that he did ride Howlett into the back to umpire Soares. So it's Andrew Howlett from half back. Former Footscray player. Spent last year at Glenorchy in Hobart. Well, they all went the fist there, and Pastore stayed down. Gave it to Smith from 70 metres. Goes to Rickman. Lovely pass, Grant Smith. And accuracy is the only question that remains to be answered here for Ian Rickman. He's kicked Williamstown score of 1-1. This is his fifth kick coming up. Played seven minutes. I think he's got it. No. Well, the breeze, it seemed to pick up an intensity, and he would have been right in thinking, I think, that that would have uh, come back. It seemed to go straight. Sam, when you go back to, uh, as Peter called it, Howlett's kick back there, that they, no options it was there for Williamstown. They're all standing, waiting for the ball to be kicked to the pack. Yeah, exactly right, Len. 
Kaku with pace, takes on Gould. Oh, he's lost it. And Windy Hill living up to its name. The roof just about, about coming off our commentary box position. You can hear it in the sound effects microphone. Zumpire Summers about throws the ball in. Wiedemann on the left, round on the right. One by Big Barry, but Alan Ede sharks it. Twisting and turning towards Ingram. He flies, punched away by Murphy. And again, out of bounds on that defensive side. It's interesting to note, Len, also that Coburg are running onto the ball as opposed to Williamstown players who seem to be stationary, don't they? They seem to be waiting for it to come in their direction before they'll create something. Ingram doing the ruck work against Round. That's <laughs> Miner with nowhere to go. Pastore caught by two. Round got it across to Kenny. <laughs> Wiedemann thought he was in position about three times there to mark that one. Just the ball. 18 points is the difference. Three goals, the lead for Coburg. Delray got it to Swan. Lending some support is Andrew Howlett from half back. Rickman. Against two, wins out. Hits the post for the second time. He just took that too easy, Sam. He really did. Oh, words fail me. He wouldn't believe that a man of his experience Again, no. Sam, when you look at that, uh, it, it gets back to what we heard Barry Round saying at uh, quarter time, is that they're not talking. Someone should have been there telling Rickman he was clear because he was well and truly clear and still running as fast as he possibly could. Could have run into the open goal. So, the difference. 15 points. But they're certainly doing a lot better around the packs, aren't they, Glenn? Coburg? Yeah, I'd like to see, uh, at least for, say, 10 or 15 minutes, Barry Round stick on and just man up with Wiedemann and let uh, Murphy go for the hit-outs against Big Ingram because I think they're getting too much from Wiedemann back there in the half-back line. McTaggart finally gets it out. Round off to Swan. They're going the wrong way. Swan weaves his way through with good skill. Smith has to fly, thumped away by E. Garzi. Making heavy work up. Smith into Aziz. Oh, the leg oh. came out. Ooh, that's only a four. And it will be. Will that be for intentionally tripping? Yes, I, I overheard Peter Cameron there. Intentional trip. Gary Hocking got off a few weeks ago. $2,000 fine. Yeah. No, 17 points, but uh, I think Aziz might come out of that with a very bad corky on the left leg. That's where it happened, mate. Something might get him sparked up anyway. Now, 17 points they trail by Williamstown. In the breeze, Aziz in, in front, but 40 metres from goal. And he too has missed up here. Must be a little bit of a pocket there because uh, the shot from Rickman, that one from Aziz, really didn't uh, come back at all. They're not deviating a great deal through the air. Petey, you're right. A bit like the Bermuda Triangle. The ball has come back, and it's come back to E. 16 points the difference. And here's Garzi. The Liston medalist. Bouncing it to mine it. And their handling is not sure at all. That's Kenny putting his body in. The big weed. <laughs> Couldn't get the handball away. Mark Wiedemann hauls himself up to do the ruck work. Against Round. Alan Eid. Pastore from a standing start gains 50 metres. Garzi from 40. 
and that doesn't come back either. Well, I guess the good sign from Williamstown's point of view, Len, is that they're getting a little bit more possession. I think they're just starting to put more physical man-to-man -man pressure on Coburg. And there's not a team that can totally withstand it if you can apply it constantly. Bede to Gumley on centre wing. One bounce, now two. Gumley into the 50 metre region. Down goes Taranto. Doyle, who's been quiet in the pocket, couldn't keep it in. Well, Roscoe's a tremendous contest, isn't it? Well, it's and both sides will be commended in the spirit in which it's played. Ball the object. It's a bruising encounter. There's only two reports, Sam. <laughs> You're right, they're throwing themselves in. Kakua. Pace. Inboard to Langan. Oh, goal coming up to Langan as he missed it. Well. That's what grand finals at the times can do to you, Lynn, isn't it? Well, we're getting the uh, the nerves and the the fumbles and the misjudgments and all that in the second quarter. Normally the first quarter brings that, and as we saw with Reynoldson's goal, Allison's goal, they kicked uh, beautifully. But I think uh, Coburg have slipped into a bit of uh, grand final nerves in the second quarter. Brendan Littler warming up for Coburg. Post his last drink. If he feels a condemned man going out here into the battle or not. Kenny, caught by Langan. McTaggart, off to Peter Kenny. Former Carlton player, finds his is. He met the ball that time. The great mark. Great strength. Delray, starting to just get clear a little bit, Williamstown. And they make a tell on the scoreboard. Rickman again, the target. And now a spill from Sheldon. 86 list and medalist. Finds Nimo. These handballs a little more perfect. Doyle gets it back from me. Working it into the breeze with handball. Now the long kick. Which way will it bounce? It didn't have to. Cameron Doyle from 50 metres into the wind. Well, what a superb passage of play. They just linked up and they had support. All around the ball player, four or five handballs then. And finally yielding a superb goal by Cameron Doyle. I don't think he even had a look at them. I bet he did. He <laughs> <laughs> was a rover, Peter. <laughs> the rover. Had a bit to do with him, Len, have you? <laughs> They're in their eyes from the back line. Gumley. Coburg, perhaps a, this is the start of a roll. Long towards Littler, who's just come on for Langan. Bounces nicely for Kenny. Oh, brilliant tackle. Ball still in play. Reynoldson, tackled by Willis. Williamstown under great pressure. One is Carl. Gets a kick away, but it's all Coburg. Doyle, he took it over the line. You saw that. As Agazi comes off the ground. I was about to come off for uh, Vinnie Di Martino, the Liston Trophy winner off again, second week in a row. There he goes. It's not a good sign, Ross. Only a few possessions, four possessions so far. Throw in in forward pocket. Allison. Kakua. Dispossessed. Gould. The tackling by the Coburg forwards is good. Swan goes down. Ingram. And the fumbling in the back to Kenny. Sadi Ghazi. Murray Nilsson on the right, yet to have a run. 50 metre penalty. And the kick to be taken by Peter Kenny. They certainly are a lot more proficient in ball handling, Len, aren't they, Coburg? Well, it's this skill, it's the style that uh, Phil wants. They just want to move the ball around and keep chipping it away until they get an opportunity to get one over the top. And they're such good converters of opportunities. You let them get it from anywhere in the ground, they get that opportunity and they'll kick a goal. Number 45 is Del Rey. Bassett leaves Rickman and knocks it over the boundary line. Sam, has young Bassett had a run with the league club? Yes, at Carlton. He was recruited from Carlton this year. But I've got a sneaking suspicion he might well find his way back to Princess Park next year. I'm be surprised. I know Cole Kinnear's been having a bit of a look at him too. He's Carlton, isn't he? That's Rickman off the ground. Post number three. Well, 
unbelievable from Ian Rickman. We were just talking about his man, Adrian Bassett. He's kicked one goal for Ian Rickman. That would have been a miraculous goal. And just really what the doctor ordered for Williamstown. As they find themselves 21 points adrift at the uh, 17 and a half minute mark of the second quarter. Only six goals kicked in the match so far as Sheldon finds Rennitz. It's about a fine on ball player, Timmy Rennitz. 13th possession. This is Ingram. Well, I guess Cole Kinnear would have seen a bit of uh, Bassett at Carlton when yeah. he was a reserves coach there. He's just impressed with the, the, the way modern football is going, that anyone that can cover the ground so, you know, let's say, gracefully uh, and with good skills is a much needed player. This is Ede. Little is the only Coburg player here and he spoils Murphy. Well, they've got a job to do, the Lions, and they're doing it. If they're in the position to mark, they'll go for it. Outnumbered. And defence was the option there. Picked by Littler, who's come on from interchange and got straight into the swing of things. Chance for Williamstown now. Swan being fairly quiet. Hand passes to round. Murphy. Runs his 10 metres. There's no one at home except Di Martino coming in late, but Evans was free kicked or he either had the mark one of, one of the two. It doesn't matter. Free kick. Falling down badly across the half forward, Williamstown. Evans, that's a thumping kick towards Ingram. Coming through, Doyle almost took it with him. Littler fires it out in the dead pocket. Doyle with a bit of time, screws it back. And a fine mark by Andrew Hallett at half back. He's also has been relatively quiet. Thank you. Into the breeze go the town. Finding space, Grant Smith. He'll run on with it. Short one for Di Martino. Good mark in front of Sheldon. He's in the centre square. Thought out the hand pass. He's called to play on. Back to Smith. They're mucking about. Will they lose it? Carl. Great pressure, Coburg. Littler, support from Taranto. He'll paddle it on to Allison, possibly. No. Thought about it with a hand pass. Squaring kick, looking for Reynoldson. And he marks. Long shot at goal, not deliberate enough, Greg Reynoldson. Could have had uh, perhaps his fourth goal. Well, lucky to escape there, Len, weren't they? When they yes. had possession. Yeah, another, another mistake that uh, young fellas at Dimentino that uh, should have just made. You've got to make one effort to give your forwards an opportunity. He gave three opportunities and then messed up the final one. Well, the difference is 23 points. Just a bit of doubt about that behind the kick off the ground and hit the post from Rickman. It hasn't been put up onto the scoreboard, so we'll sort that out at half time. Here's Wiedemann trying to get going and Swan passes him as if he was standing still. Boundary line beats Billy Swan though. Sam, I made that comment before Ree Wiedemann. I'm not saying about Round. I'd like to see Round pick him up and tag him because Wiedemann's another body back there as an option and I, th I think they would be better off with Roundy up on, on him for a while. McTaggart got it down to Carl. We saw the other rover, Sadi Ghazi, waiting to come on. And those patrons over on the outer side of the ground, the Windsock side, seeing most of the action with this breeze on the defensive side. Play naturally tending over there. This is Aziz against Wiedemann. And again, McTaggart flies in, gets it to Carl. Caught by Allison. Gunley kept it in. That's Angwin, head down. Only as far as Kenny. Underneath it, Brad Nimmo. Good catch in the outfield. It's Minot that comes off to allow Garzi on. Nimmo is playing well. Long with the breeze. Round in the way. Kakur tries to spoil, but he can't. Very round's doing well with possessions. 13 to him. Grant Smith fires a pass in. Ill-directed, and Mark Needham and a kick behind the plate. Mark's inside the defensive 50 metre line. Now he's got a lead. Unstuck it comes. McTaggart, he dropped it. Very difficult in the tricky wind. Off to Angwin. Defensive side. 
Long looking for Littler, but uh, too long. BT and Howell it over. Coming up at halftime, plenty of entertainment for you. We'll be meeting the man we saw toss the coin before the match. Wally Carter, former Williamstown coach, the Coulda Beans. Met him late in the week and we'll be seeing the final of the a, a sprint for 1989. The richest sprint over 400 metres in the world. Eddie Bush will be calling us to join that one. Just notice there's Murray Nilsson on the right. Greg Minot on the left. Garzi again shaking his head. He's not having a good day. Listen, trophy winner. He uh, rove this one from Barry Rand. He's on left of screen. Round looks for him. There he is. Almost got it. Swan. Come, come by Cameron, so I'll bounce it. Gee, they're desperate. Land, aren't they? Running straight at the ball, Coburg. Forcing Williamstown to a lot of mistakes. Just feeling a bit uneasy and unsure of themselves. Centre wing. Out of side. Swan playing for the free. Ooh. He's going to get it. We've had uh, 23 and a half minutes of the second quarter. 23 point will lead to the Lions. Doing it well. Coburg looking for back to back flags. Wiedemann off to Nimmo. And Garzi not chasing very hard then. He could have got him earlier. Wiedemann kicks defensively. Beaten by McTaggart is Eid. Bouncing ball, Carl. Oh, cleaned up. Good side bump from Sheldon. Just too desperate. And numbers Eid pressured by McTaggart. But they're doing it very hard. Williamstown up forward. She's run into a lot of heavy traffic, Lindsay Carl, this afternoon, hasn't he? He's certainly making sure there's not much space for him to operate in. I reckon a few of those Williamstown players are looking a bit tired already. Well, they've certainly got the initiative, Coburg, psychologically. Wiedemann wins. Angwin tackles Swan. Got some help from Rennitz as well in the tackling role. Well, the scoreboard says 33 points the difference. We make it 32 points the difference. 23, 23 rather, and 33 as Carl gets Williamstown forward. Good mark, Delray. But free of Nimmo on that occasion. Looking for the Rickman mark. It travels a long way with the breeze. Rode by Aziz. Well smothered there by Bassett. And Evans helps him to see it over. On the full, the call from the... Yes, the Peter G. Free. Well, there was a signal of out in the full from the boundary umpire, Sam. No, you want to By see. John Summers, look. Ian Rickman appealing for it. And you see the boundary umpire with a similar signal, so... Uh, I don't know whether they help out with the deliverance as well. But it certainly didn't look like it came off a foot. As Aziz from five metres puts it in front. Del Rey. Sandwich. Look at all those blue and red Guernseys around him. Just let desperation. Go, let go, let go. Into time on at least uh, from Williamstown point of view. They've uh, restricted Coburg to two goals. That's the good sign. They have, but the bad sign, they're not doing a great deal themselves, Ross. And the... The, the thing that concerns me about it is that the fact that they're reliant on either Rickman or Delray taking the big mark, they're not doing the team-orientated things well enough at the moment. Off the ground. Bounces over. I'd love a goal here. In fact, they need one. Williamstown are into time on by a minute. Gary Shell in the back pocket marshalling the troops. Round. Can he inspire them? Wiedemann throws him aside. Bassett goes for the safety. There's Bassett. Rickman, number seven. Rennett's quick from uh, hand to foot. Out to Angwin. Oh, Smith and Littler clash. Angwin looks for Ingram. Ingram's in front of Murphy, off to Doyle, too slow, dispossessed, Kenny's got the fumbles, and again, the Lions have the numbers, Ingram long to the pocket, a bit too long, over the head of, of uh, Greg Reynoldson. As we saw again there, Sam Coburg were the ones literally made the effort to get up and ship it, and where is his opponent, sitting back? Rhys Langan on left of screen, Brett Weatherall let yet to uh, take the field.
into the sun around doesn't make contact free kick for Swan Tenth possession for the sentiment he's got 50 meters as well they're the things I find frustrating if you're a player he's waited for the people to get out of his if he had have handballed it and hit someone he would have been given 50 meters so he waits to get it back there straight to the <laughs> foul only gets 50 meters anyway as this has made the lead floating behind the pack team Matino well I'm sure the target was as is what a beautiful kick I direct yes you're... well if it was a perfect pass if that was the case Made good long distance too there. Swan. First possession for Di Martino. And didn't they need that one? Kicked over 50 goals in the reserves this season, Vin Di Martino. And in latter weeks has come in on interchange. Well, I think you're right, Ross. He did flip it over the top of Aziz. And uh, he just ghosted in there, Vin Di Martino. Just floated across, found that bit of space. But what a badly needed goal. And Swan and Gumley are probably negating themselves in the centre. There's not a great deal in that duel at the moment. So 17 points. It's a close, tough struggle here at Windy Hill for the 1989 flag. A quick goal from Williamstown to be very handy. Aziz tackled. All lucky not to be penalised. Coburg went to uh, right. lap about to let Williamstown get a quick goal just before half time. We've had four minutes of time on. Round. And there's a high tackle. Well, that's a terrible attempt at tackling Grant Smith. He had the opportunity of running through him or just pinning him, and he just ran alongside him and gave away his foolish free kick. Doyle with Swan. Di Martino, second possession. Good use of the football to Aziz. Loose is uh, Pastore in the pocket. He can run onto this if he's got the legs. And through comes Sheldon. Well done, Nimmo. Oh, beautiful feint. He's caught now. Not out of it. Rickman comes in. Bit of desperation required here by the Seagulls. Di Martino, brilliant. Pastore lines him up with a short pass. Oh, and Darrow waited for it. Excellent play from Anglin. He covers a lot of ground. Good reader of the ball. I've only seen him two or three times this year. He's got a great understanding of what's happening in front of him. They're right out of danger, though. Rickman for Williamstown. Here's Anglin again. Rennitz. The roar comes up from the opposition supporters now as the Coburg Lions push forward. Well marked by Allison. Stole that off Kenny. Reynoldson against Willis. Did everything but mark at Greg Reynoldson. Kakua. Littler going back oh. on Howlett. 50-50 says the umpire and seen through by Guru. That's exactly as umpire saws call it. Both going the ball. 19 points the margin. Gould kicks in. Out of side, Siren sounds half time in the 1989 grand final. So, we'll just confirm up uh, on those half time scores when the goal umpires get to the middle and uh, wave to the scorers to uh, confirm that it is three goals the difference at half time. And so they've extended that lead from 13 points to 18 points, Coburg, in that quarter. Goal kickers for them, Greg Reynolds in three, singles to Doyle and Allison. While for Williamstown, one to Rickman, one to interchange player Di Martino. Coburg having the better of Willie in the first half of the 89 VFA Grand Final in very difficult conditions here at Windy Hill. Well, this game will be available to anyone who wishes to purchase it by getting in contact with ABC Marketing this week. TV sales on box 9994 GPO Melbourne, 3001. And you uh, must include $45 or a cheque for same. And for that, you'll receive a VHS or beta video of the grand final, along with Mark Fidian's book, The Roar of the Crowd, A History of VFA Grand Finals. So uh, 
if your side gets up, if you enjoy the game, then uh, get in contact with the ABC and you could uh, take off this grand final for your personal viewing for uh, now on. But it's Coburg, who look good at half time, leading by 18 points. For some lucky couple, tonight is their night of nights as a lifetime dream becomes a reality as years of hard work, practice and patience are rewarded in the grand final of Vance Danson, giving them the chance to compete in the UK or the USA. Who will win Nats Danson? And will the grand final winners be your first choice? Find out as Paul Newman and Maureen DeLacy bring you the grand final of Nats Danson. 7.30 tonight, ABC. The golden horse of Lord Alicar. The San hunter-gatherers of the Kalahari Desert. Robots that make motor cars. Join internationally acclaimed scientist David Suzuki as he reveals the link and takes aim at a new myth, technology. It's given us the tools to achieve tremendous power over the physical world. But by its very success, it has unleashed a monster. The Clockwork Universe, a different mythology with Dr. David Suzuki. Next on Planet for the Taking, 6.30 Saturday on ABC. And we can confirm for you that it is 18 points in difference. It is 5-6 Coburg to Williamstown's 2-6 halftime in the VFA Grand Final. Well, we've got the a and Sprint coming up for 1989, the final, after the heats have been run over the last uh, seven or eight weeks. Eddie Bush is our caller. Eddie, who do you think is going to win it? Very different. There's a pattern, actually. Headington in the white I like because he's got a touch of class. He ran fourth in the 400 at stall. They kept him. That's the only performance he's got. But then you go out to James, who got beaten in his heat of the 400, then won the 550 at stall. Uh, the second limit marker, young uh, Wishart, he broke 45 seconds at stall and run fourth in the final of the 400. So they're all runners that, you know... They're Where's the money going, bunnies. Eddie? I like Headington. Headington. OK, so Eddie Bush going for Headington to win the a sprint, the richest sprint over 400 metres in the world. That's coming up very shortly. But uh, to start this game, we saw a VFA legend revisit uh, the Windy Hill ground. He played VFL football for North Melbourne, coached them as well, but uh, he's remembered best in VFA for leading Williamstown to three straight flags. Couldn't quite notch the four in a row. And his name is Wally Carter. The Could Have Been Champions met him during the week at the uh, annual Paran Football Club VFA Grand Final Lunch. The Paran Football Club VFA Grand Final Luncheon has become an integral part of the build-up for the big day. And at 9 Darling Street in salubrious South Yarra on Friday, the coaches of the respective grand finalists were able to forget about any last-minute football worries because the questions from the expert panel had little to do with football. And Dyke's a big uh, thing down there. Have you got a dietitian down at Williamstown helping the players through this vital week? Actually, uh, Ian Rickman looks after that portfolio. <laughs> Super coach, Phil Cleary. And uh, he has got off his uh, sick bed to be here. He's had the flu and he's got his pyjama top still on. But uh, Phil, uh, welcome and I'll hand you over to uh, Tony uh, in charge of the panel. Could you just address the crowd? Because I know everyone's, you've got their attention. About 20 minutes about the wrongs of apartheid in South Africa at the moment. <laughs> No, I know that most right-thinking people and all the people here would be anti-sporting tours to South Africa, Tony. The Coulda Beans even trotted out an old a funny thing happened on the way here joke. We got into a cab today and the bloke says, oh, I know you, you're, uh, you're the... the no, he said, you're Mr Football. Yeah, well, I did say that. He said, you're Mr Football. Well, he, it was weird with He said, who's not... your mate in the back? Is that Neville Fields? <laughs> <laughs> Stand up. Is Neville, is that Neville Fields? in it? After the frivolity, George and Tony took the guest of honour, VFA coaching legend Wally Carter, aside. Windy Hill, Junction Oval, you've certainly seen a lot of great VFA football in your time. I have, Tony, quite a bit. I mean, I was only at Williamstown for four years. Mm -hmm. And those four years, I was very impressed, but especially Williamstown Football Club. And I thought to myself, they, well, they're one of these, uh, an old bush town. They used to call it, I believe, uh, can't come for the name of it, Village Town in those days, oh. before that. Yeah. The 
The old Delicent's hotels all around, you can still see them. And your four years there at Williamstown? Very, very good. Enjoyed it immensely. Who were some of the characters that played with you and against you in that time? Well, uh, one Reg Fisher, he came from Richmond Seconds, and this Reg Fisher was uh, uh, rather a funny sort of a footballer. Who did he play for? He played for, uh, he played with Richmond Seconds, mm -hmm. and then came to Williamstown. Right. Now, th this bloke, they're playing the, one of the best fullbacks in the association. I, I, anyhow, I said, you don't get a kick, don't worry about it, but keep him out the game. So what he did to the player when he met him, he said, come over here, we have a lean on the fence and see how things are going. Oh, really? We watched the game, he kept him out of it all right. Tormented him all the time. And the monster, of course, yes, Georgie. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, what, Jerry Callahan, yes. The, one of the legends. What was he like as a bloke that sort of trained? Well, he trained, he loved it. Yeah. And he loved Williamstown and he loved the players he's playing with. Right. He's really top man, Gerald Canahan. Well, he, um, you're in North yeah. Melbourne for a while. And then a few years. What made you go over to Williamstown? Uh, change of faces, I suppose. Right. Uh, well, I mean to say, I, uh, the last couple of years, at the first journey to North, I, uh, we were just going and I thought, <coughs> take a change, make a change. And I went, uh, lucky enough to go to a club like Willie. And what was your record of Willie? How did you, uh, what was your win record then? We never lost many games. Yeah. We, uh, we made the premiums for the first three years, four, five and six and the seventh, 57. We won every home and home game, 22 of them. It was a long year. Yeah. And who knocked you, you out in that fourth one? Mirabin knocked us off in the fight semi-final. Yeah. And Port beat us in the final. And that was it. Yeah. Then and Jerry all... took over and they got two years previous, 58 and 59. A lot's been said about the rivalry between Williamstown and Port over the years. Yeah. Wally, what about when you went down there from... Were you made to really hate them that much? Well, we used to hate them a bit and they hated us. Now the point is, and I'll never forget Mopsy Fraser, at three-quarter time, he got his players together in the middle of the ground and he was talking to them and the umpire came over to me and he said, is OK? He said, yes. Got to go to your position, chaps. You know, they all went to their posi uh, positions. He went over to Mopsy and said, right. He said, uh, get on to the, get your players going. And he said, we'll start. We told me to go and get somewhere. And now come in the middle of the ground, I've got my players set. They bounced the ball without, uh, without the port there. The player just rushed up and kicked the ball through. They soon got into position again <laughs> after that. Do, you, do uh, you think the current VFA players are as tough as the old days? See, I was only there for four years, but yeah. I had some tough players and good players. Mm. Yeah. William Stan, we played a game with a lot of skill. Like we tried to put, put a bit of skill into it, and, uh, which I think we did have. Yeah. But shown that they won five out of six premierships yeah. like when I first yeah. started. Yeah. And, uh, and they could have gone on, again, but uh, I think the division came into it, didn't it? Mm, yeah. One and two divisions? Yeah, first yeah. and second division. 60, 61, but oh, it unfortunately yeah. doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. In your time down there, Wally, you had a great uh, record at Williamstown. Who was the best VFA player you saw going around in those times? I thought Max Papley was a very good player. He played with... Uh, uh, he captain coach Williamstown. Yeah, but I'm talking about when he's playing for the team. Yeah, he played Marabin. Yeah, he played Marabin as well. Oh, great player. Yeah. He finished up coaching with you later on, as you Yeah, he did, he did, yeah. But Max was yeah. one of the best. Very and of course, even after all these years, you know, tossing the coin, when did, how did you get to find out about that? Well, I was, somebody rang me and I uh, got quite a shock from him to think after all these years that uh, they think of me again because I'm getting on a bit. Right. Yeah. And after all these years, the, the Williamstown Port Melbourne rivalry, do you still feel a little bit of it? Well, I always like to see Willie win. Yeah. That's the first thing I do when I see the association results and see how Willie go or how they're going. And, uh, well, naturally, when you get there, and I found uh, the players I was with, even now, they, uh, when I see them, I like to rejoice about their old uh, feats, what they've done and what they haven't done. Well, I wonder if Wally Carter has gone down to the Williamstown rooms to try and give them some inspiration at half-time because they find themselves three goals behind Coburg. If you're just joining us, Coburg have had the better of the first half. They lead 5-6-36 to Williamstown 2-6-18. The runners are out on the ground for the final of the 1989 ANA Sprint and to run through them for you, our caller, Eddie Bush. Thank you very much, Peter. And the runners now are lining up, about to be presented here to the crowd uh, for the running of the ONO Sprinter. Very good field indeed. 
Um, as I said before, there's, uh, these runners uh, that have, were kept for stall at Easter have uh, bobbed up through this final. Hiddington run that run fourth. Uh, James, the, who runs second in the 550. And they're just about ready to be sent down the track now. The first runner to go down will be Angelo Puerpolo in the purple. He's running from a limit mark of 33. This is Angelo's first big final. It's, um, he's actually uh, not quite as quick early, but he's one that battles on to come home pretty well. Darren Wishart. Uh, Morrissey Wishart was that went second in the brown. He uh, was a finalist to stall. Morrissey, the highest point score winner in the grey. Mick O'Neill in the black. Nick Gregg in the pink is one that a lot of people are fancying off 12. Stephen Tingo in the green. Jamie Cartwright, who won last week in the yellow. Wayne Jones in the blue. Eddington, my tip, in the white. And Chris Pegg, the Bendigo 5000 winner, it is in the red. Well, the runners have, naturally enough, they'll be pretty excited because this first prize is $3,000. The back marker, Peggy, has got to come around 33 metres. The track's excellent, of course, today with the uh, fine weather and uh, so that uh, the back markers have got every chance. That's Chris Pegg. He's uh, not only won a Bendigo 5000, he won a double last year. He won at Lavington, which is one of our richest meetings on our VAL calendar. Uh, and he also won early in the season at Paran. But he's got the big job ahead of him. He's a policeman. Um, and uh, he will race from scratch. That's uh, James, who runs second in the 550 at stall uh, in the blue there. He's off nine uh, metres, right beside him is Heddington. Uh, just uh, one metre behind him. Um, that's he, Heddington. Tall, rangy type, uh, is expected to run very well indeed. He, uh, of course, run fourth in the final at four, uh, the 400 at stall. Jamie Cartwright just moved up there a little bit. He's just a, another uh, metre further out in the yellow. It's uh, Jamie Cartwright, last week's winner. And on his outside, that's Tingo in the green. Uh, a comparative novice uh, is in the George Gregorio stable, which is the um, stable that um, Neil King had. And there's uh, Angelo Puerpolo, uh, the limit marker, right behind him, Wishart, a little runner, uh, very quick strider in the purple. His father won a Bendigo 5000, still around winning races, as a matter of fact, Bob Wishart. Further back then to Morrissey, the highest points winner, the Bendigonian. That's he in the grey. They're ready to go. One of the ten runners will be $3,000 richer in the a and sprint. They're on their way now, and Angelo Pure Polar, it is the limit marker that shows the way. Wishart has gone quickly to try and, yes, he's got uh, moves around the outside of him now with a kick, quick dash. That's not surprising. Then further back then to Morrissey. Further back behind him then is Grigger. Nick Grigger is in the pink that's moved up on the outside. Wishart's gone. Then around the outside, Cartwright beginning to come home all right in the yellow. Nick Grigger is in front. Cartwright in the yellow. Down on the inside, Pure Polar. Further out to Headington. Cartwright about to throw out the challenge to uh, Greg. Uh, Headington can't get to them and they're going to the line. It's Jamie Cartwright. Last week's winner, he'll win it from Nick um, Greg. On then Headington has run third and about five of them have hit the line. As a matter of fact, as you could see for yourself, they've gone over the line with no more than a metre between the ten runners. But no doubt about the winner, Jamie Cartwright. Very poor form indeed, Cartwright, ever since he's been a professional. Here they come. Uh, Grigger, who I mentioned, was highly fancied. Cartwright now begins to put in the strides. Headington made a move, but he wasn't good enough. And Cartwright is too strong for them on the good ground. And he's gone down to the line with a very easy victory indeed. Second place is clear cut, and the rest fall over the line almost in a, um, about a six or seven uh, dead heat. Well, there's another few. Pure Polo, who battled back I mean, on the purple on the inside. He then dies away, but oh, Cartwright, he's much too good. And Cartwright goes to the line. Well, Ross now is going to have a winner with Jamie uh, down there at the presentation area. Oh, we were going to. It looks like the, the Premier's... On behalf of A&A, &A, we're extremely pleased that you won it. 
And in doing so, there is somebody that I would like to thank very much for this. There's a man called Jimmy King. Now, Jimmy King has been looking after this foot running business for 15 years. And Jim, I can see him over there. Thank you indeed for all your help. ANA certainly appreciates all your assistance. Thank you indeed. Congratulations, Congratulations Jamie. Once again. $3,500 there for you. Well done, Jamie. Yeah. Not even puffing, are you? Oh, yeah, lovely. Well done. Good. So, went ahead, Jamie, after last week's win, uh, great effort by you. Yeah, I'm getting used to seeing you a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Anyway, very pleased, very hard to run in these blustery conditions. Now, what? make sure you don't kick that football in the crowd and do your hamstring. Yeah, well, I'm not very good at kicking this football, so I'll leave it alone. I'll handball it. OK, well done. Who's your tip now? Uh, that for Kobe. OK. Jamie Cartwright, the winner of the sprint. Well done, Jamie. Well, I've got my expert panel with me, Len Thompson and Sam Kekovic. Len would be happy to see a good bull ants man there in the Premier, Mr Kane. But it's time to uh, judge the goals and marks of season 1989. No bias, gentlemen, for your respective sides, though, Sam. I don't think you've got any entry, and I don't think you have either, Len. So it's uh, going to be all above board. Let's uh, first up take a look at the goals of season 1989. Goal one came from Grant Laurie against Port Melbourne. A great burst through the centre, a bounce and then bang from 65 metres. Wayne Harms showed Coburg a flashy left boot. Two hands to it. I thought he should have held that. And off the ground, a soccer shot. Magnificent. The Liston medalist was a star around the packs and near the goals. The man is at the You could be forgiven for thinking there were three Kakuas on the ground for this Coburg goal. Kakua putting the icing on the cake perhaps. Bad bounce for Weatherall. Gets it back to Billy Kakua. He deserves a goal here. He's got it. Superb play from Billy Tufik Kakua. And that really is a superb way to cap off the game for Coburg. Nico ignored the boundary line and kicked a beauty. This would be a brilliant goal on the run. Oh! And goal number six, again the instinctive Kakua. goal of the year will uh, receive an inscribed plaque from ABC Sport. Len, who do you go for? I'm going to go for Kaku, the one that he carried up the ground. I thought it was an outstanding effort. Into the win, tough position of the game and did it very well. Sam? I'll endorse the comments. I think yes. it was the best individual solo effort. Yes, fabulous goal from Billy Kakur. So uh, he's won the ANA Goal of the Year on behalf of ABC Sport. We'll be announcing the mark of the year and giving a look at the nominations at three-quarter time. But we're just about ready to restart the grand final for 89. John Bell and Ross Booth have been listening to the coaches during the break.
Thanks, Peter. But firstly, two reports to confirm. Brad Nemo for striking and Robert Evans for tripping. Williamstown and Barry Round, John? Well, very angry Barry Round at half-time. He built it up uh, in the dressing room at half-time. They've got to attack the ball. He's very disappointed with the efforts of Garzi and McTaggart in the first half. Still not enough talk out there. It's a case of tackle and chase. They're still very much in the game. Of course, disappointed with the 3-1, three, one, three uh, shots that hit the post. In fact, uh, without... Uh, well, they've been goals. They, the score would be very even. They still think they're well and truly in this game. Phil Cleary not happy either. No surprise there. Well, they look more determined to see goals. It was Di Martino putting his body in, and there's Rickman trying to keep that ball in play. But I think Di Martino's given them a bit off the bench, actually. We saw it at the end of that second quarter, and he got very much involved there. That was Smith that went down. Carl getting it out to Di Martino. Bassett, good pick up under pressure. Snap back, it's there from Smith. What a start for the Seagulls. Well, that was an excellent goal, Peter, and it certainly only put just one minute of the best into that, uh, into this third go quarter away, of football. Go, 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 go. And we've got uh, what looks like a lively Williamstown team that's come back on to start this third quarter. We mentioned Lynn, didn't we, at half-time that they appeared somewhat lethargic in that first half, but I don't want to say they're disappointing because it really detracts from the Coburg's fine performance in that first half, their capacity to sustain an effort and place them under enormous pressure. But as we've seen a number of occasions before, they've certainly got the firepower and the quality of player to bounce back very strongly, and it certainly has to be done in this quarter. And what an excellent start. Just two goals in it now. A goal within a minute for Williamstown. Rennett's looking to bounce back as he gets it to Eid. Roving is Doyle. Bounces about 45 metres out from the Coburg goal. And looking at uh, the windsock atop the scoreboard, I think the school end is definitely being favoured. There is Garzi. He set sail. Breeze might be against him, but he's made a good 40 metres there with that run and bounce. And none does as he looks for Rickman straight to Angwin. I thought it was a poor option he sought there going out wide. He would have been far better off direct and down the corridor, straight up the middle. That was the fly from McTaggart. Langan able to get up without having any pressure put on him. Rennitz through the hands of Murphy goes again found Smith very experienced player Grant Smith as he gets it to well a pride of Lions and Garzi looks more fired up good tackle there on Nemo now questions umpire Soares I think he should be fired up uh, Peter he's the certainly the star little man in this Williamstown team and Liston Trophy winner he's got to add the bite around the packs. He's the player that's got to carry the ball. Round wins that one. Rennett's... Oh, he's showing them a clean pair of heels again. Barry Round has to chase. Good shepherding Allison. Advantage paid as Allison goes down. Up to set half forward Ingram. Clear his pleased with his efforts. Running onto it is Doyle. Kicked a brilliant goal in the second term and oh, it's a post. Well, that post is finding uh, getting in the way a lot, Sam, isn't it? I oh, say, Ross, I can't recall the last game I've seen where the post has been hit. I think five times they've found it. There it is again. Good effort from Doyle. Doyle's been a player that's been near getting a lot of possessions, but fumbled too often. Rennitz to the edge of the square. Good fist from Willis. Swan knocked it back into danger, but went back and got it himself. Desperate tackle from Reynoldson. Gumley's clear. That's going to go nowhere near hitting the post. Except it's a fence post. Should have handled there, Billy, I reckon. Gould. Front position, Kenny. He got the hand to it. Gumley gets it to Allison. Langan, the tackle on Kenny. Very cool pass story. 
Taranto against Di Martino. Now Del Rey, cousin of Vinnie Di Martino, comes in to lend out. Some assistance and go for Smith. Angwin and he had a real box on in the grand final last year, and it's Smith who tackles Angwin right in that position. They threw some of the best punches you'd ever want to see. Nothing untoward in that except a free kick for Jeff Angwin, but he did feel it. Certainly felt it all right. But once again, a poor execution right of tackling by Grant Smith. Angwin, but uh, in the way, Peter Kenny, off to Swan. He'll have to feed it off again. He's caught with the ball. Billy, and away goes Doyle. But umpire Cameron says, I'll have none of that. And Phil Clear at halftime, too, was very disappointed with some players' efforts. A bit of uh, selfish play. Too many undisciplined 50-metre penalties, Sam. So both coaches uh, reading the right act at halftime. Well, there'd be a lot of positive things they could extract from that first half because it was mistake-ridden. Ingram coming from the back, first hands on it. Well rove Gumley onto the left foot. It's going to just not get the distance. Garzi comes in. Well done, Liston Trophy winner. Takes it. A very timely mark in the teeth of goal. Well, let's say, Sam, we're only six minutes into this third quarter, and I think Garzi's covered the same amount of ground as he did in the first half. Yes. Certainly looks a lot more committed and involved. Kicks to the defensive flank. Over the back. Swan goes down, Rennitz goes for the football, clear. Scrappy looking kick, Langan's caught with it. Must be holding the ball, no. Yeah, I tend to agree with you, Ross, I would have paid the free. For a superb tackle. Here we see it on replay. Yes, good execution by Howlett. Didn't ride him into the ground. It's pivoted to the side. Clean bold Swan. Garzi helped him out. High tackle on Bill Swan from Ingram. Really fans say it's about time. 13 points the lead for Coburg. Well, didn't come from behind the mark, says the umpire. Almost a brave mark from Howlett. He should get the free anyway. The ball's there, you still hit him hard. still hit him hard. Doyle had came in and crunched Andrew Howlett to the deck and he still hasn't got up. Take your time with him, please. Courageous play, Andrew Howlett. One of the unsung heroes of the Williamstown defence. There's a professional percentage job every week. It's Willis that takes the free kick for him. The Martino holds the back of his head. Rennitz. Howlett's back up to oh. Langan and gives away the free kick. I don't know whether he'll claim concussion and have the free kick annulled. Oh, I don't think it's quite filled into the That's VFA right. ranks yet, Pete. But who knows? Uh, Gee, I was just right, about Andy. to commend him upon oh, his yeah, discipline mate, and professionalism. Mark, and Andy! Just looks a bit groggy, Andrew Howlett. Well, it's Reese Langan from 30 metres. Oh, what an effort! Langan, a brilliant goal. The breeze coming across the face probably helped him to swing it in. But he brings up his first. And a little bit of a steadier after the first goal of the quarter was scored by Williamstown. And the Lion fans start to roar. There's a view of some of this large crowd in attendance here this afternoon, Pete. Wonderful crowd witnessing a very, very tight contest. Just have the feeling that the shackles are going to be removed. We'll see a wonderful half of football. Umpire oh, Source bounces it. Another kick to Rennitz. Oh, he's just been devastating, Ross. Indeed. 22 possessions for oh, Tim Rennitz. Up towards Ingram. Kenny will have to use his pace. Pressured by Doyle. In comes Angwin with support. Down goes Kenny. Angwin Peter still looks to be suffering from that heavy tackle a few minutes ago that he got laid on him. He still gets back into the fray, Len. <laughs> oh, he, he is a player with courage, isn't he? Round there. It's all Coburg. Oh, Ingram. Shot on goal is good, Kenny Ingram.
Well, Ross, just sheer persistence, ball the object, numbers to the ball, and all of a sudden through sheer hard work, an opportunity evolves, and here we see Ingram spinning out of the pack and snapping truly, and what an excellent goal. Jeff Angler, in fact, is coming off, Len. Yeah, they put Littler back on. I think they'll uh, they want to make sure that Angwin's OK to finish this game off when it gets tight, so they'll have a look at him, give him a bit of a rest, let him recover and put him back out there if it tightens up. Phil Cleary was very happy with Ingram's first half. Been, uh, he said to him, just keep persisting, the brakes will come your way, and there's one... Exactly, Ross, contesting, that's the name of the game. 25 points, the biggest lead that they've had. Oh. Nemo has an indiscriminate charge from Garzi. Gumley in the open spaces where it is two to one. Langer. Alison or Kakua to run onto it. It's the ladder. Told to run by his teammates and the crowd. Chips for Reynoldson. The leading goal kicker on the ground, Greg Reynoldson. And it just got clipped on the ankle there as he let out his fifth mark. And that's the task that confronts him. 45 metres, 50 degree angle. He's kicked three straight so far. Four now. No round on the line. Well, the big fellow saved the couple in that last line. There'll be a lot in that one. But Kakua blistering out of the middle. It was just one of many options. Just appear to have a decisive edge in pace, Coburg. Len, don't they? Yes, when you get the ball in the hands of Rennett. And that's Lindsay Carl's left leg, which was drained during the week. A bad knock, and there's another player, Angwin, with knee troubles. Now Ingram, half forward, over to Ede. Into the pocket, Willis has got the front spot this time. And Reynoldson presses it and rushes it through. Some of the William Towns tackling efforts have been appalling, Ross, haven't they? Couple more. They have. Couple more. That's it. Minette now is back on the ground. He waits down. Roves it well. Gumley's with him. Minette towards Nimmo. Delray turns quickly through. Comes Pastor. He tried to charge his way through. Loses it to the solid Nimmo. Kicks back. Doyle waiting underneath. Good spoil by Cameron Doyle and Pace. And another bad tackle by the Seagull. Play out! There's a touch of frustration creeping in, Lynn, isn't there? He's got to do that when you're not capitalising on the, the efforts that you're getting around the ground from some players. And they're waiting for a reaction to happen, Williamstown, and then they're having a go instead of just going straight at the ball. 60 metres out from the Lion goal. Doyle cutting off Garzi. So, well, right. Sorry, Peter, when you look back down the ground now, which we can do, obviously, from here, you see E forming one line and then Weedham in the next. So it's a big effort for Williamstown to get across them both, isn't it? Yes, they're setting up the wall very effectively, Coburg, which... Yeah, you know, the, the main players in that area are invariably Ede and Wiedemann. Rennett's got it to Kakua. Or Williamstown here. And Hal, it's still pretty groggy as the tag it mark behind him. Pretty indiscriminate kick. Rennett's. Taranto over the top of it. Round couldn't take Kakua out of it. Hell when he was nowhere near it. I think he's quite happy now to go back and take his kick after Gould really stopped him at all costs and it could cost them the goals, though Billy not the longest kick in the competition. No, this will be the hard part of the assignment here, Pete. 45 metres, might be just a bit too much for him. Goes the torpedo! Wrong side of the post. But he's certainly placing him under a lot of pressure, Billy Kakua, because of his blistering pace. Lenny. Set, Being manhandled a lot in this game. Sorry, Pete. It's that desperation of the mm. ball. 
defensive go Williamstown again. Swan, who's had a had the ball up and had been under great pressure, finally gets a kick clear. Unlike Billy Swan, apart from that beautiful pass to Dimitino for a goal in the second term, he's not been able to find his mark, especially this term. Kenny has to ruck with Wiedemann. Wiedemann, too much height. Garzi. But tag it. Sanders it. But Bassett Touch, reads Touch. it beautifully. Right Takes a strong mark. 28 Touch. points the lead to Coburg. Halfway through this last quarter. Bassett, beautifully done. Into Toronto. Right Loose men again, one of them Alanine. Support from Gumley, chooses to kick. Inside the 50, Allison trying to spoil, but Peter Kenny takes a good mark under pressure. Well then I guess, you know, there's some distinct signs out there now. They've got to do something positive to get back in the game. They're badly falling across the half forward line around the packs. Well they are, I think, I think Williamstown have got to throw this uh, big as is and Delray under the ball for short periods and get some life out them change things around they're just too predictable Bassett like brilliant set himself on that one from 10 meters behind the pack I think he's hurt Ken Ingram in the process he met it front on Langan switches it back into the middle Littler deserved to lose that Gould looks for someone Delray's there in between Evans Fisk goes to Garzi charge down well and sees it over the skipper Brad Nemo. Twice there, one beat two. In the air and on ground level. And it was Coburg victorious on both occasions. They lead by 28 points. And there's a free kick for Wiedemann against Danny Del Rey. They're riding on the wall for Williamstown unless they can change it around in a hurry. Ingram's back up and mobile, but can't spoil round. Well, plenty of men standing still. He doesn't give the handball off to them. Kicks himself. Knock from Di Martino is good play to Garzi. And Evans on the last line. The experienced custodian. And again, Littler fumbles. Comes off this time. And it's met by Gould and passes in the back. Williamstown should have a good look around now. Ingram's crook, Evans down there in the back line, looks as if he's hurt his leg. So they've got some wounded out there, Coburg. That's it too, I think. Minette, who oh, had to go one-handed. McTaggart, not using the ball well enough, Williamstown. Can swam this time. Long kick, Garzi has to fly, or he didn't. Seven. And Smithy's going to get the free kick, a lucky one. Oh, it was the right decision, Ross. OK. Yeah. It was watered off the ball. How oh, bad are your experience, Sam? Grant Smith. Aziz will fly in a huge pack. He goes down before he got the opportunity. Off to Sheldon. There's a show of pace. Kenny's got lots of pace coming from the back. On Doyle. Well pressured, Peter Kenny. Was it in the back? No. Aziz. Oh, he just bangs it straight back. Delray! Can he get a miracle goal here? He's under tremendous pressure. No support except from Rickman. Kenny. And the free. To Nimmo. And I think Nimmo made it look pretty good. Oh. <laughs> he was poleaxed as he corkscrewed into the ground when the whistle came. He got up pretty quickly, Brad Nimmo, to take the free. No trial by video in this game, is there? <laughs> Minus. Pretty tough on him there. And away goes Kakua. They won't get him. As long as the ball comes back to him. Might have just travelled a little bit too quickly for his oh. own good there. As Murphy gets it to Swan. Now they're in the clear, the Seagulls. Advantage paid. Long bomb from what Gould. Got the kick and went there. Raving from Di Martino, caught by Bassett. It's Wiedemann in the last line this time. Rennitz and go to Littler. Oh, shit. Clumsy. Number 11, let him get the ball, 11. Get the ball to him. Stay in the field. 
Been made down the field, all 10 metres. Little of the free kick. It's Pastore, number 17, unable to get there in time. Well, we're 20 minutes into the third quarter. It's a 20 point, 8 point lead for Coburg. And the two previous times in the last four years that these sides have met, it has been the third quarter that's told the tale. 86 was Williamstown, 88 Coburg, who set up match winning leads. Coburg would like one or two more before they'd feel safe. Round with socks down, battling solely against Ingram. Gumley. Gould trying to lift the seagulls. Nice turn. Gets it moving to Kenny. Look, look at that. Wiedemann sitting back across half back line. Hard to judge in the swirling breeze. But he got in the way. That's the main thing. Just haven't got enough players playing well enough for us, Williamstown, at the moment. Down on confidence, a number of players. and. A bit tired, they've had a pretty gruelling final series. Tough one against Box Hill in the prelim last week. Wiedemann thumps it, Goldwood. Bassett out, teaming well with Ede. McTaggart gets it, on the left foot, high one. Aziz in front of Evans, but Evans does well with the left foot, the left foot. I guess, Len, that passage of play really sums up the two sides. Coburg's entry to the forward line is very precise and neat as opposed to Williamstown who just kicked the packs. Well, it is e excellent from that point of view, Sam, but one of the things I think as much as anything, and Coburg has certainly played well and applied a lot of pressure, but players like Aziz, Rickman and Delray, who rely on their marking, have let the wind beat them. They won't even create, they're waiting for the thing, hoping that it comes in their direction instead of calling and making leads for it. hasn't abated and Williamstown though they struggle can't eat into this Coburg 28 point lead Wiedemann got it to Bassett Alan Ead Nimmo to centre wing two on one it favours Williamstown but it's Ingram who beats the odds Howlett joins in Rennett's shepherding the ball there for Langan. Could have been penalised. Ingram. Doyle looking for someone. That someone's Reynoldson. Waikakua takes over. Away it goes from Howlett. Kenny. He sets sail. Centre wing to half forward. Rickman from behind. Had to go defensive. Bad bounce for Smith. Battle of the half-back lines at the moment as Ede picks out Langan. Langan on centre wing. No time, no pressure from Gould. Support from Doyle. Now can something go right for the Seagulls? Rickman, just one kick for the quarter. Squares it to Swan. He gets a nice bounce for once. Loose on centre wing is Garzi. Around Nimmo. Nilsson's back on. He's going to be caught into the back, into the ground. No free kick, ridden into the ground. And look at the numbers that Coburg have. Nimmo goes to Kakur over my net's head. Kakur with pace. We can't keep it in. Very selfish. Absolutely disgraceful performance by Garzi then. Had an opportunity, had Delray sitting out by himself for at least five seconds and had ample opportunity to get the ball over to him. Nearly into time on, a minute to go. 28 points for Coburg. Kaku is running at goal and putting it through. First goal and the lead now 34 points. We tick in almost to time on. Well, just too quick, too good, and too committed at the moment. Here we see it on replay. Rennett's once again doing well, knocking the ball out. And Billy Kakua, hasn't he set them alight this quarter? And it's been a far greater display of athleticism and agility on behalf of the Coburg players, as opposed to Williamstown, who are a little bit rigid and tight and haven't got the flexibility in the bend. 
Sam and Len, here's the middling stats for the quarter. Kicks, Aziz 1, Carl none, Delray 1, Howlett none, Rickman 1, Murphy 2, Willis 1, Round 2 and Pastore 1. There's Smith who got them off to such a great start. Now Willis, interchange player. Too many to beat him. And it was Allison that saw it over. Garzi finds the boundary umpire. By a Gower, who I saw uh, knocked out at VFL Park one day when the player came crashing into him. That was Nielsen, put the tackle in on Rennitz. Smith and Gumley exchange a few Ooh, kick, kick. little subtle no, ones. One on Not subtle side. enough, Your though. Rennitz has been spotted, though. Grant Smith. Sets it up for Rickman. Di Martino in the front of the pack, spoiled by Bassett. And there's Chops, poleaxed. And Langan's been reported. Listen, mate, I made a report. Go away. That's it. Off the foot, please. Mate, A bit of a liberal use of that. Elbow, Ross. Well, the scene where there was a great deal in it. Oh, well, Ian Rickman uh, rehearses that one. <laughs> I would also say if you got hit as hard as that, you wouldn't be standing there waiting to take the kick. It's a load of rubbish. Peter Cameron's too experienced to fall for dumb acts like that. Let's take a couple of minutes. It's the third Coburg report today. But they lead by 34 points. Right there. And there's a player laughing at the umpire now. Rickman going for his second goal. He's got it. Twenty-eight points the difference. We've played twenty-seven minutes into the third quarter. Gee, and what a badly needed one it was too. See Bassett punching away with venom. Rickman in pursuit, kept getting one. A lucky free from behind. See the wind grabbed that ball as it went through. The umpire had to do a lot of work, but it was six points. I think the wind definitely favouring that end now, Ross. The right of screen. You can see the, the bounce going that way. Kenny. 27 and a half minutes gone, third quarter. The goals need another one. McTaggart, that's high. That's making it hard for Rickman underneath it. Didn't even fly. Delray. He had the fumbles, he had a shot on goal coming up, and now he's caught! <laughs> Holding the ball, says umpire Soros. What a wretched final series Danny Del Rey's had. Yes, had a wonderful year and just lost it at the wrong time of the year. And not all the Williamstown tempers on the field, Frey. Some off the field as well. Spud Dullard got in there to keep Jack as is away from the fray. And Time Brian Patterson, a member of the Williamstown hierarchy, got involved there with Brian Allison. It's your mate. Hey, it is my friend. He's normally Central a very Motors placid man. Williamstown. <laughs> yes, Williamstown Central Motors. Oh. Be too many uh, bargains there tomorrow, I don't think, if they don't fire up now, Williamstown. Has it gone on the full from Wiedemann? No. Just a little bit slack there, Robbie Evans, as he crossed across the ground. Well, Smith is convinced it's out on the full, not so found out by a deliberate, I think, they're calling for it. Wait a minute with Nilsson. Gumley battling hard in the packs. D, D. Martino. Rickman caught behind. Bassett, well done to Allison. To centre field. Pastore. Again, that's making it hard for a forward. On the half volley for Smith. Taranto. Finds Gumley. The numbers here. Ingram on the outside. He chooses to kick into space for Kakua. Well done, Billy. Still in front. Now the pace. One bounce. Two after him. On the angle. Puts it through. But a free kick. He's run too far. Well. Yes, here we see it. I suspect he did run a little bit too far. Count the steps. But that pace. I'm up to 48. <laughs> <laughs> There's the kick in. 
So a let off for Williamstown, 28 points, the margin. Nearly to 30 minutes of this third quarter. Sam, this game's steaming up to an excellent last 30 minutes, isn't it? Well, it's not a great deal, but when you consider only 12 goals have been scored for the game, it's you can't see how Williamstown can get back in when they've only scored four for the three quarters of the game. They've got to score five or six or even more to win. Gould takes over from round. Smith trundled it out there to Del Rey. Back it goes to Garzi. He beats three. Garzi inside to McTaggart. Caught by Angwin. That typifies the match so far. Taranto caught by McTaggart. Anything you can do, I can do better as Swan. Finds Vinny Di Martino. Through for a behind. Hopefully. Difference 27 points. 31 minutes into Five the third minutes. quarter. Great tackling there from both sides. Five minutes, thanks. But McTaggart looked to be clear when Angwin cut him down. If his knees are a little bit dicky, it didn't show itself there. Gary Sheldon, joint Liston Trophy winner last year. Short. Oh, and just finding Brad Nimmo. Coburg take a 27-point lead into the last quarter of season 1989 in the VFA. Their goal kickers, three to Reynoldson, the rest all singles. The only multiple goal kicker for Williamstown is Ian Rickman with two on a day where goals are very hard to come by. Coburg, have they done enough? We'll know in about 35 minutes' time. And we will be announcing the ANA Man of the Match as well as uh, nominating the victors for season 1989 in the VFA. That selection goes on the back of an envelope along with your name and address. And if you get it into VFA House by last mail on Wednesday, you could win $200. That's the viewer's prize. A street kid from the Big Apple, a young actor who rose to become the highest paid and most popular movie star of his time. He was Steve McQueen. This is Eric Stoner, the Cincinnati Kid. His stunning good looks and sexy blue eyes melted many hearts. His movies made millions. He was a man who did things the hard way. What do we got here, Kathy? Fire started. His success, his failures, his family, his zest for life. Could give a damn if he was a movie star. He was just one of the boys. He was Steve McQueen, a man on the edge, a Hollywood great, a Hollywood legend. Don't miss his explosive story. 7.30 Saturday, ABC. Darlings of the Gods, the fairy tale romance of the 40s. Vivian Lee was Hollywood's biggest star. Laurence Olivier, the world's greatest actor. I love you. And I love you. Yet, their commitment to each other while touring Australia changed dramatically. You're afraid of expressing real passion. You save all that for the bloody stage. Could one man ever satisfy Vivian's desperate craving for affection? Would you like to share a glass of champagne with me? And then she fell in love with Peter Finch. Does this mean your husband might offer me a job? Oh, on the contrary. And they formed a bizarre triangle of lust, love and ambition. She's not like other women, Finch. I know she's very special. A sensational two-part Australian miniseries, Darlings of the Gods, premieres 8.30 Wednesday on ABC. Let's see if we can see the contrast in the huddles. Phil Cleary, his side 27 points up. Keep doing what you've been doing. The call from Cleary while Barry Round in the middle of the seagull nest. Well, there might be a little bit of hope flickering there, but a big job in front of Williamstown. Let's just take a little break from the grand final. We've got uh, Billy Kakua, the winner of the ABC Goal of the Year. Len, Sam, watch these nominations for the mark of season 89. 
Damien Condon took a mighty grab early in the season against Box Hill. In the same game, Peter Nicholson flew over Stephen Harkins to take a screamer. The best of Bassett came against Springvale. Springvale with a free kick. Oh, Bassett! Mark Four and Grant Smith playing Box Hill. Watch out for Michael Reeves against Coburg. Oh, brilliant Mark Reeves! And last but not least, Pastore playing the Bales. A high ball, Pastore comes in and takes a very good mark. Some terrific grabs there. Peter Nicholson from Box Hill had a nomination in the goal of the year, also the mark of the year, Sam. That was a beauty. It was a superb mark, and the, all the marks were of exceptional standard anyway. I thought they were all superb marks. Adrian Bassett's taken a good mark here today, Lynn, uh, and he must go close. Yes, you would. I thought that was an outstanding mark. Difficult conditions again, and, and just eyes on the ball and right up there. Took a lovely mark. OK, but who do you give the big prize but, to? Uh, I think when we see the replay, you can see how far Michael Reeves makes to take that mark running in the wrong direction. And courage is the name of this game. The player with courage is the one that usually wins out, and that was an outstanding mark. Well, he's got number four on his back. There was another number four played for uh, North Melbourne, who used to take a mark or two like that. Also for Richmond in uh, Royce Hart, a bit like Royce Hart. You said it had a special Royce yeah. Hart about him, yes. You've gone for it as well. I've gone for Reeves. OK, yeah. Michael Reeves is the winner of the ABC Mark of the Year. Well, some consolation there for Box Hill, who were knocked out last week. Have Williamstown been knocked out here, gents? Any chance for them to get back into it? I think they've got a chance, Lynn. I guess they've got to throw caution to the wind. They've got too many players down, but to think they've only scored four goals for the entire three quarters, when you consider the firepower they have at their disposal, it's almost mystifying, isn't it? It is. I think one of the things, uh, and, and my reason, other than Coburg are last year's premiers and an excellent side, is they constantly do the same things. And if you've got players that need to get on top of themselves, get their confidence up, like the likes of Delray, Aziz, uh, Rickman, that are rely on their marking today. They've, they've also had the pressure from the Coburg players, but the wind, it's a difficult, swirly wind, so that way you have to do more work. Well, they've increased their lead at every break. It's 27 points going into the last term. John Bell and Ross Booth. Well, well John, uh, Phil Cleary's told the boys to get excited, don't do anything silly, nothing overconfident, and Peter Darby told me they'll now win by nine goals. Well, Williamstown think they're still in it. They think a four-goal break is not insurmountable. They've got to play in front. Barry Round's been saying it all day, still not happy with the way they've approached playing in front, and they reckon they can still do it. But uh, at this stage, well, the scoreboard's certainly looking good for Coburg. Should be a great last quarter. Well, Pete, there is the belief that they can still do it. They've certainly got the players out there, but they need a big lift in attitude and aggression and yeah. possession. They've got to put that belief into practice Come now. On. Wiedemann won the first tap, and Rennitz gets it clearly out of the middle for Coburg. They're going with the wind in this last quarter. Doyle overruns it. Certainly desperation on the face of Tony Pastore. Kenny didn't get the best of bounces. And he's given away a free kick on Tim Reynolds. The best man on the ground. And that's never by the story. One beats three. Reynoldson was a nicely weighted kick. Langan had no one to give it to on that side. And the right decision made by umpire Soares. It's fullback Willis for Williamstown. Well, they gave Coburg some scares in that last quarter last year. Del Rey. He missed one last year. Pastore missed one. As down goes as is, he's okay. Can Ghazi inspire them with something? Sheldon sweating on him. Sadi Ghazi wants the win to do the rest. Well hooked back after it had got over the line between the goal and the behind post. But they bring up the first score. 
The opening five or ten minutes, Lennon, vitally important, aren't they? They just must score a goal to give themselves some hope. Williamstown can't get into a slogging, Max. They've just, otherwise, they will not score. But as you said, uh, they've just got to throw caution to the wind and get after the ball. That's Gumley from the kick-in. They're up on centre wing, Coburg. Langan on Murphy. Swans had plenty of experience in grand finals for Port Melbourne and Williamstown. It's Gould that took over from me. Finding Glenn Murphy. Seagulls to centre-half forward. Bassett takes the ball. It's swirled away from Delray in the wind. Bassett had a fine third quarter. Actually, he's had a fine match. This is Mark Wiedemann slowing things right down. Let's go, says Peter Cameron. Minot went with the fist. Gumley. Eid. Anglin calling for it in the middle. Receiving. Ingram's led as has Reynoldson into the same spot. It's Reynoldson. He's given them something up forward all day, Reynoldson. Put the Williamstown defence under a lot of pressure with his aerial work. Sixth mark, in fact. Ingram didn't get a finger to it. This could be the nail in the coffin, Sam, if he gets this through. Difficult shot from there. Yes. Last year revisited, is it? No. Who's the rover? It's Brian Allison. Kakua couldn't take it. Allison spins back in and is now. Oh. High, says umpire. Soars. It's against Minot. They can't poise that off. No, I don't know if It's a bit tough, I think. Mm, I think he had him around the Ten body. Meters. It just sort of slipped up a little bit. Ten metres! Get rid of this mic and we'll have a chat. You're right. Well, is this the nail in the coffin? Right. 26 points the difference. The experienced Brian Allison. Kicks his second goal. 32 point lead is the reigning Premiers. We've played four minutes into the last quarter. Not surprising. Oh, not surprising that Langan's coming off. He's done a couple of nice things, but he's uh, made a few mistakes today, and their usual full forward, or they've had uh, a change of height, bringing Weatherall on, but he's a dangerous player. He uh, no, hasn't got the talent of, but plays a lot like Hudson used to play, Sam. He just sneaks the ball through, doesn't he? Yes. There's Langan going to the bench, Weatherall down to the pocket. It's a wonderful option to have off your bench, though, isn't it? It is. Players of that calibre. Fire on! Eid. Taranto, fist it forward, Rennett's brilliant, over to Ede. The lead from Weatherall, straight into the action. Play on! Quickly on with it, call to play on. It's a, not such a good kick at the back, Doyle over the top. Reynolds and Ingram running at it. Quickly to Doyle. And he misses. He misses a lot of those, Cameron Doyle. Just a little too impetuous at the crucial stage when he's had an opportunity to steady. If it wasn't sealed, that would have certainly have sealed it. But I think it is already sealed. They just... They've got a sniff of that back-to-back -back Premiership Cup. Nielsen flies. McTaggart for himself in the end, the handball. Gould's held and he didn't have it. McTaggart can hold his head up high. He's tried very hard. He's probably the pick of the Williamstown players. Twelfth possession for Gould. Murphy. Oh! Oh, Kenny was not the man picked out. It was McTaggart. Two on two. Del Rey, as Rickman stayed behind the pack, the numbers went out. Bassett, Cooley, picks out Doyle with a beautiful kick in these swirling conditions. Give it back to Bassett. <laughs> He's kept going past Len. Another poor kick from Doyle. Might come off Weatherall. Trying to get it clear to Kakua. Minor trips him deliberately. Put the foot out from underneath him there. 
Well, we saw a report in the first quarter for a similar incident. There he is there, I've got you. Got him. Against Robbie Evans. You see Miner just slide in with the boot. Got him. Perhaps lucky not to have more than a free kick paid against him. Fellow with a cigarette in the middle, right back through there. Six back, I'll name him. Right in the middle. Kick there. Yeah, well, there's been a report in the, in the crowd middle. anyway. A can has come out onto the ground, apparently. And umpire Cameron. Keep going. And he's mind on more than what's going on on the field. Keep going. There, yes. he, is. there he is. This can <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> Williamstown supporters, and like, there's an even more disconsolate one now. It's like Cat and Cameron. Right. Nabbed by umpire Cameron. I don't think I've ever seen that before <laughs> or heard it. Here goes Kakua. Stay there, Pam! Round stands his ground. Di Martino. That should have been on the ground from the outset as he finds Murphy. Advantage is played. Sheldon. Well, will he here? Nilsson. McTaggart. Can they work something here? They need to. Smith loses it. Angwin steady. Despite the knee injury. Beautiful kick to Alan Eade in the middle. Round court, twixt in between. He's at centre half back. 23rd possession, Alan Eade. Looking for Reynoldson at the back, they all misjudge it. McTaggart, who's really playing well, thumps it wide, but it's all Coburg over Wiedemann's head, but look at the numbers they've got. Wiedemann puts in a good shepherd, and Coburg have got the legs. Gumley in support. Easily around that tackle from Swan. Gumley squares it to Ingram. Wynn takes it. Delray, here's a chance for the goals, but a bad hand pass. With Taggart short to Rickman. Very quiet day from the, the full forward. As is in front. Through Evans' hands now. Gowsey on the left. Well, well, well. When things aren't running your way, they don't run your way, Ross. That was a relatively easy snap for Sadie Gowsey. How many minutes. times have we seen during the course of the year just steer those through? But Saw him on the goal of the day today, Sam. Yes. Lovely little shot. Well, a player completely without confidence, even though he's won the Liston medal as Sadi Ghazi. He's not the only one. Bassett to Taranto. Ede towards Reynoldson. He stays back, and Willis shepherds it over the boundary line. And Lynn, what a wonderful game Alan Eads played after a relatively slow start in that first quarter. We should take up coaching, Sam. We spurred him on, didn't we? We yeah. said the right things to him. Got him going. <laughs> Been outstanding. Round down to McTaggart. Nilsson. Open spaces in front of him. Rickman is up on centre wing. Doesn't even get in the contest. Di Martino away from Evans. He puts Smith under the hammer. Away goes Garzi. He can let it go through as is. They've got one of them back. First goal for Sadi Garzi. Comes up at the 11 minute mark. So it'll be interesting to see that on replay. I think Garzi went for the goal and didn't go for, uh, for Aziz. And there's Aziz all by himself. Yes, when you're down in confidence, Lynn, you tend to do those individual things as opposed to complying with the pattern of the team. Left. Now, oh. tied round, heads at the ball. Swan, get it out. McTaggart, well done, Brett McTaggart. What an example. Long, the wind grabs it. Evans underneath. And juggles the mark. And uh, Robert Evans was actually uh, looked to be distressed at three-quarter time. He's done nothing wrong. He's a very frugal back man. It's Robbie Evans hasn't given Jack as is a look in today. As in fact, most of the Coburg defence. Robbie Evans missed last year's Premiership glory under suspension. Could get it today. Through comes Sheldon. Brilliant and dashing. The kick is poor though. As Littler appear, or reappears on the boundary line, about to come back on to Coburg. 
Brendan Littler. Not calling for the camera, but calling for a drink. It's a hot day. And it's Augusti Northerly. Round battles hard, right till the end. McTaggart, what a great effort he's putting in. Bassett breaks up that attack. There's been opportunities out there for Williamstown, Sam, because Coburg have made more skill errors in the pressure of a grand final than what they normally would have done. Just like the pace they capitalise on it, Len, and the surety of handling. Wiedemann down to Eid. Smothered by Rickman. This is Swan. Support comes from Minot. Garzi had to fly against Bassett. Been a run the right the He's making a run for the uh, Norm Goss medal, Sam. Let's go. Yes, I've confined it down to two players. It's not your choice, though, today. It's up to the VFA selectors. Make some distance with the kick, too. Kakur wants to double back on it. Mine, it was a wake up. Murphy left it behind. Doyle gets within scoring range. Great run, Cameron Doyle. That must be the ceiling. No, it's over the post. Hit, hit the post, in fact, Peter. Chief, he can only well, finish off some of his thanks. good work right. as Robbie Evans comes off. A job well done. And justifiably feel proud of himself. Round marks at half back. Wobbles it into the middle. Di Martino. Go and get it on to Smith. Long Rickman at the back. He's looked out of touch all day. Bassett's had the better. There's Ian Rickman. He's a number of occasions he's just stood down and not attempted to mark. What a sad day for him. Delray, socks down, will ruck for Williamstown. Chance for Di Matteo. Now Smith, can he weave his way through? Dribbles it forward, then dives in after it. Certainly a contest from Grant Smith, if nothing else. There's Robbie Evans. He does look not very well. He was vomiting at three-quarter time. But in days to come, he will look back on this thing and... Uh, Enjoy his participation. Delray. Angwin gets one high. Yes, that just typifies Jeff Angwin's courage. Always got his body between him, the ball and the player. 17 possessions for Jeff Angwin. As it was at three-quarter time, 27-point leaders at Coburg. Bounce back in. Oh, everything going against Williamstown. Nimmo. This will be interesting. Kakua away from Minot. Kakua told to go by the crowd. Reynolds and Nilly got back onto it. Willis done a pretty good job at oh, the kick it to. There's three on one here. Doesn't matter that it's not marked. Away goes Allison. Doyle. He's had a bit of bite in life for that forward line, Cameron Doyle. Stay there now. 15th possession for Cameron Doyle. He's going to need to kick this goal, Sam, to uh, cap off his work that he has done. As you said, he's added bite, but those missed goals, the uh, Rovers can't afford to miss them. Reynoldson! <laughs> Look at this again, and we'll see mm. Captain Coach that should have punched. I used to get that when I was old. Uh, when I was Greg old, Reynoldson. Sorry. Three goals, won his personal tally today. Ten possessions as well. Not a bad effort at full forward. Oh, tremendous. No, it's looking a bit deja vu like. This one's a bit easier though than in '88. Angled not though. Gave himself a bit more and hit the post. 
Well, how many posters that must make? Seven, I think, is it? Seven. Ian Rickman's got three of them. Willis kicks in. And Kenny Marks runs around Wiedemann, who you saw a moment ago stretching his hamstring. While Reynoldson took the kick at goal. Delray finally marks. On he goes with it. And the pass to Rickman. Can he get around? On the left foot. It'll bounce the right way. It doesn't have to. He's got it. Number three for Ian Rickman. Just shows us again, Sam, with the movement, if they would move, like Kenny marked the ball and took straight off and kept the movement going. Delray should, should have proven to him he can get in the game and take some marks. Get the ball to Rickman and you're going to get him a few goals. Yes, in the name of the game. Getting that ball moving quick. Getting it forwards on a one-on-one -on -one situation. And plenty of space. That's exactly what they created. And there was Rickman's perfect snap. 22 points. Can your team come up, Sam? <laughs> well, it's a big assignment, but if they can... Just as I speak, Angwin intercepts. Yes, put out the big left mitt. Minor, left Kakura, the right option. They've got a few loose men. Vinny Di Martino. The Seagulls, not dead yet. Garzi's on his own in the goal square. Here he is. Oh, and 50. No, not quite, umpire. <laughs> Booth, but it's Sadi Ghazi has had a horror day. Should have been, Sam. Well, you're saying to preempt what's going to happen now, Russ. 50 metre happy, you fellas, eh? Yeah. 35 metres out. The Liston medalist to give his team some hope. Oh, now another poster. Eight for the day. See, I'd like to look up the history books and see the last time there was eight posters Five in a game of football. 16 possessions for Ghazi, plus one gold, four. I suppose that counteracts Cameron Doyle, doesn't it? But the, the legs of Dimitino, who's not tired, he's been on the bench through the finals for much of them, giving them a lift. Round. He moves it, he's got to. To Gould. Up towards Delray in front, thumped away by Nimmo who's done very well on Danny Delray. There he is, the Coburg captain. And a member of the 79 grand final team as well, Ross. Round from the back. Coming through is Aziz, close to the line. Oh, a hander in the way by Sheldon, was almost through to Ghazi. Clock ticks over, 19 and a half minutes gone. 21 points, the difference. Wait a minute in front. Reynolds will clear it for the Lions. Thumps it towards Ingram. And Nilsson spoils. Coburg have had their chances to wrap it up, but it's still somewhat in the balance. And it's with 29 possessions getting that ball to centre wing. Not out of danger though. Swan from round. As is couldn't get there. Wiedemann just bangs it out of trouble. Minor lost it. Kakua draws the man. He'll get it back. Not a good handball from Weatherall. Still with Billy Kakua. Caught by Swan. The veteran shows the way. Di Martino takes the advantage. He could go again if he wants. And again. Oh, past Angwin. Vin Di Martino straight into Smith, a teammate. And there are three Coburg players waiting. One of them is Gumley. They're just hacking it out of defence at the moment, Coburg. And going for the lines. Weatherall doesn't take it over. Nilsson. Seagulls fighting for their lives. Murphy picks out Smith. Time of the essence. Rickman! Well, it's just lifted a notch, hasn't it, Len? Hey. The hands are starting to finally work out that they're a good side. Uh, I think certainly Coburg have lost the edge just a bit. They possibly thought they had the game signed up.
Well, the Brews got hold of that one, and Ian Rickman's tally for the afternoon is 3-5. And even 20 points in it. And Smith and DiMartino. See the movement again, Sam. Once yes. there's movement from them, they start looking like a good team. Coming up to the 22-minute mark. Sheldon kicks in. Mine it. He held it just long enough. Now yeah, let's look for that movement. At 80 metres from goal. There's not much. Goes short. Gone nowhere. Straight to Wiedemann. Angwin is flipping it about. Gumley long towards Ingram with Nilsson. Ingram cleverly keeps it in. Kaku in support. Now Ingram goes for the run. On the left foot, where's Reynoldson? Over the top it goes. There's Reynoldson. Screwing it back. Weatherall underneath it. Oh, and he's lucky not to be free kick. Kakua! Oh! It's not got the distance. Another chance. Weatherall. Lots of time. Over the shoulder. Puts it through. That's the ball game. Well, they threatened danger there, Lynn. On about three or four occasions till they finally got it through the big opening. There's a happy lion, Leo the lion. I know a couple of Leo people. Oh. He's done well weather all since he's come on. Full forward. Fair possession since he's been on the ground. An excellent... Uh... As you said, Sam, when he uh, came on the ground, what great replacements for interchange players to have sitting there to have that impact in the forward Again. line. Yeah. Centre square in Frisbury, and that goes against Williamstown. Well, I know two Williamstown stalwarts. One in the Epworth Hospital, Turpo Stokes, who wrote to us during the week. Appreciated the letter, Turpo, but I don't think they're going to get up for you today. Weatherall, spoiled by Murphy, down to Aziz. And there's Delray, perhaps Mrs. Duthie and Horsham. They're not quite dead yet. Well, the tale of woe continues, Peter. Yep, we're coming up to time on, Sam. And the crowd is starting to leave now, those of the yellow and blue persuasion. Looks like the dream of back-to-back -back is about to be realised. I noticed you left the farewells to, uh, or the, the <laughs> saying hello to people are very late before you get Sam warmed up. This is his. Only as far as Wiedemann. He's a master of that kick behind the game, isn't he? And how they find him out, they just single him out, the opposition. I don't know why. 17th possession for Mark Wiedemann. Round couldn't hold it. It battled on well to Nilsson to Swan, to McTaggart. Let's. Bassett got the sit here. Oh, he willed it to come into his hands. Adrian Bassett, a consummate performance at fullback, seven marks. Jeff Angwin, you wouldn't have known he was injured. Allison, doubling back on it with Pastore. And Tony Pastore has had such a fine final series. Couldn't back up again today. McTaggart hasn't stopped trying. And here's round again. Gould or Swan calling for it. Vinny DiMartino. Didn't know what was bearing down on him. Overrunning at Nimmo. <laughs> Look at that Gumley and Engwin fighting each other for the ball. And it's Wade holding the ball. Well, I think it might be Garzi that gets the free kick because Di Martino was nowhere near putting any sort of tackle on. Garzi wastes no time. Oh. Bassett! Brilliant! I can see why he asked whether he came from a league club or not. Lent. Been a wonderful defender. Nine possessions for the quarter. That was his fifth mark for this quarter. It's hard 
tough thing when you balance football out at the end of the day. We, we have got Rickman with 3-5, uh, three posters in that, and yet uh, Bassett, as Sam has said, and I agree, I think he may have taken over from Rennitz to win that yeah. uh, Best on Ground award. He's just been as safe as a church up there. Peter Kenny. Not a lot of options for him. And that's holding the ball. Good stuff. Yes, Alan Eads played a good game after you. Just gave him a gentle reminder that he was out there, Len. They must be able to hear us through the umpires, Mike, can they? They've just been short on options. You know, they haven't been running in numbers. Swan hasn't stopped trying and I think took over from Gumley after about uh, midway second term. Yes, Billy, he's worked tirelessly. Unfortunately, he's been put under a lot of pressure. His possession hasn't been as effective as we've come to expect from him. But he has kept trying. As is this man, Big Barry. Minot. Bassett steaming out from fullback. Rickman wins out here. Smith used his body very well there on Angwin. But oh, look at that! Brilliant from Bassett, and he's got the free kick. Well, if that doesn't wrap up the Norm Goss medal, I don't know what will. He was out of that contest, and he got back to take the ball. And Smith just crunched him into the turf. I know the VFA selectors are responsible for choosing the man of the match, Peter, but, we'll put the they, must have faith, them, but they must have faith in us because they were up here at three-quarter time seeking a bit of advice to see if they... Good to hear someone's got some face in the stand, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. 26 points in front, Coburg. What an excellent place to put the ball. Like that Ken Ken Lent, wouldn't they just play the ball game over the white line? Kakua. Smith to Gould. Not a good kick. And Bassett was behind that time. But he takes his sixth mark of the quarter. It's one thing about this game, Peter. When you focus in on a player, the ball just is magnetised to them. There's Rennitz. Rickman thumps on. But over. We've played half an hour. The siren is all that's between Coburg and back-to-back -back premierships. Well, not quite half an hour. A lot of tired men out there. It's fabulous Phil's not on the boundary. I can't see him down there yet. He getting it not quite to the wing. Swan. McTaggart. Those two. Two of them sounds best. Big torpedo from McTaggart. As is. Jack Aziz. Twelve kicks for the day, and just his fourth mark on that occasion. Just the one, you're on it now. And not even a roar for his first goal of the afternoon. There it is! Back to back for the Lions. 20 points, the final winning margin. The super coach, not just in name, not just self-proclaimed. He's done it two seasons in a row. Phil Cleary out to congratulate his players. And the windsheeters have already been printed. For the third time in the 80s, a team has won consecutive grand finals in the VFA. It was Port Melbourne for the first three grand finals under Gary Bryce. And Ray Shaw led Preston to two consecutive grand final victories. It wasn't going to be Barry Round today. Williamstown have lost two in a row to Coburg under Phil Cleary. And Brad Nimmo, their skipper. The only survivor of the 79 flag, that broke a 51-year drought. And they've gone on and won 88 and 89 under his captaincy. The Lebanese marvel, Billy Kakua. 
And Ian Rickman, dejectedly, doesn't really know where to head. Three goals, five for him today. Three of those posters, a total of eight shots for goal hitting the post today. Doesn't really matter much now. From go to woe, Lynn and Sam, the deserved side has won the grand final. Well, it's, it's got down to, and I think football's based around, and Sam played for a number of years in uh, a team like North Melbourne who do the same thing consistently. And today we've seen a team, Coburg, who won last year's premiership. They do the correct things. They see the smothers and the tackle and that effort that young Bassett put in there to get back in the contest. A minute or so to go and all of a sudden, and, and they're 20 points in front and still a desire to do the correct things in football. And that's what makes teams great because they all build confidence from it. Today, uh, that's what happened again. It's no doubt that Williamstown got the same amount of talent, but I don't believe the same level of disciplines within the player in the Williamstown team to do the hard things. Not the great or the spectacular things, but the grey things. Well, let's hear from the, and son? the defeated coach today. John Bell is with Barry Round. Barry Round, uh, obviously uh, great disappointment having just left the ground with a tremendous performance by the boys in that last quarter. Yeah, we fought it out, but uh, it was just too much for Lee to make up. And well, we took the Coburg two in a row. That's uh, a great effort. Yes, they certainly did play well today. They did come over the gear, Murray. They made the Sutton boys on the water. Yeah, we, uh, we didn't play very well, but I suppose you only play as well as the opposition allows you to. And, uh, you know, we. We were very disappointing today, but uh, as I say, full credit to Coburg. A lot of mistakes in the first quarter when you had the breeze. And, and this week, the Cup went back to San Diego. OK, a bit of interference there with the radio mic. But um, I guess there's not a lot Barry can say. You can see it on his face. That says it all. And what a contrast. Ross Booth will shortly bring us an interview with Phil Cleary. Here he is, Phil Cleary. Well, Phil, is it as good the second time around? It is much better. It's much better, Ross. It's a dream come true. It's unbelievable. They played great football. They smothered Williamstown, a very good opponent. They just smothered them, and their character just stood out. It was a wonderful experience. For my mum and dad, with you, love. Well done. Look, we'll have, go and do the celebration. We'll have a word to you in a minute. Okay. Phil Cleary, back-to-back -back premiership coach. Well, it was his father that uh, Ross interviewed in the rooms after the round 15 victory by Coburg over Williamstown. He said, well, Williamstown won't beat us again. They only met once more. That was today, and he was proved right. They just seemed to have their measure. As Phil said, they just smothered them out of it. It was a comprehensive victory. Peter really was. So we watched the presentation. I just couldn't help but look at the Williamstown players. And Len, you could add to this. I mean to say we've both been there on winning and losing five sides. To the Coburg Football Club, the coach, the coach Phil Cleary, Brad Nemo, and all the players and all those responsible. A great performance, two in a row. Congratulations to you. Who's taking the cup? Here you are, Brad. Well done, Brad. done what was required all season, Coburg. And there's Peter Darby getting a handle on the cup. 
Got to feel sorry for Peter there, just topping down in the white windsheeter. Injury has robbed him and now Mr. John a place Payne in both these grand year. final victories. Dave Williams there and also missed. Brad Nimmo, the skipper, is with Ross Booth. Well, Brad, 79 was uh, the, the, the first one last year and now this year. Yeah, it's fantastic, actually. Oh, this one's the best one. You played, a, you played a great part in yourself, a great effort on Danny Del Rey. Oh, yeah, I'm happy to do my job. Uh, everyone knew they had a job to do, and all the boys done their little bit, you know. And that's what it's all about. That's what wins flags. All right, well done, Brad. Thanks very much. Up. Now, the hey. medalists. Every player in the victorious side receiving a medallion. And I know Ryan Allison, a man here watching it today. Keith Forbes, former Coburg great, who played in their 26 27 Premiership sides. They won medallions, and the Coburg players were very envious of that. As Adrian Bassett goes up, will that be the only medal he gets here today? We'll find out the Goss, Goss, medal, uh, Goss medal is shortly. Steve Gunley gets his, but Greg, it's great to Greg see all the players getting medallions here. It's been a bit of Guernsey swapping. That's Greg Reynoldson. Brett Weatherall. Interchange player who perhaps kicked the seal, a lend back over his head there. <laughs> Took a lot of getting that sealer. It did, they had about three or four goes, but again, the quality of the side, they didn't give in. They just kept at the job. Finally, they got the ball through. Well, joint list and medalist last year, Gary Sheldon has not put a foot wrong in the back pocket this season. Not a bad game, I wouldn't think. The Bear, Ken Ingram. Good physical contest from him today, not spectacular with possessions. Well, under duress, Robbie Evans came up and he's got his grand final winners medallion. And this man probably typifies the spirit of Coburg, Vin Taranto. The Coburg market will be the place yeah, for bargains tomorrow, Angle. I can tell you, especially the Taranto uh, fruit stall. And Jeff Anglin, well, if Taranto typifies Coburg, Billy what Gattua. does Jeff Anglin do? The popular little man this guy is Cameron Doyle. And Doyle, a lot of hard work, skillful work, except perhaps in his capping off. Lane. It doesn't matter much now. Reese Langan spent some time on interchange, came in today. Ethel Hodgetts there with the Premier, Mr Kane. John Greve, the VFA president, announcing the players and the coach. And to make the presentation of the best player award, Mr Bill Jewell from a a and the trophy goes to Timmy Rennitz. Well, for the second season in a row, the ANA player of the match, the Norm Goss medalist, is Tim Rennitz, the Coburg Ruck Rover. He had a power of possessions. Rennitz with 24 kicks, two marks and six hand passes. Well, that must feel good. We have an outstanding feeling for the, the young player because he's... Uh, He's been good all year. He hasn't just popped up in the grand final and played a blinder. He's, uh, he's been a consistently good player. He's uh, one of the hearts of that team. And, and there he is with his second Premiership medal and, of course, second Norm Goss medal. Well, here is the Goss medalist for 1988-89. Back to back for him. And also for Coburg, here's Tim Reynolds with Ross Booth. Well, Tim, you must love grand finals. Best on ground two in a row. A bit of a surprise, Ross. A real surprise. I think it was more a team effort than uh, individual sort of stuff. Oh, a bit of a surprise you win. Oh, well, never mind. You take those uh, accolades. Well done. You played oh, yeah. a terrific game. Tough game in the conditions. It was, yeah. A bit, a bit hard with the wind, but I think we handled it all right. You don't sound too excited. No, I'm excited, all right. You're, you're over the world, are yeah, you? Yeah, that's over right. The over the mean. Terrific, Tim. I just want to get away and do that lap. I missed out last year. Go, go for it, Tim. Beauty. Well done. Tim Rennett, a player of the match.
So that's the name to jot down on the back of an envelope and get it into the VFA by last mail Wednesday. Your last chance to win the $200 viewers prize. But uh, what a prize Coburg have done. Back to back, really, uh, it is the most sought after and elusive prize, I guess, in football to win consecutive premierships. It's a very tough assignment, Peter. I guess Hawthorne are striving for their back to back next week. And yeah, it is a very, very difficult assignment. But all credit to Coburg. And I just couldn't help for the victor and the vanquished having been on both sides of the fence. And I know what players go through and the feeling really hasn't seeped into them yet. I guess they won't really, won't really do it upon them till the wee hours of the morning or the, in fact the following week and the ensuing weeks prior to the next year. But it's been a tremendous achievement and whilst the game really didn't aspire to the heights in terms of a spectacle and skill level, it, it was really an enthralling contest. And as Phil mentioned, they really did smother them in the commitment and the contest and the aggression displayed by Coburg really did typify the character that is obviously prevalent within the club. And gee, that stands for a heck of a lot in a pressure situation the grand finals invariably are. Well, for Williamstown, their third grand final loss in four appearances since 1986. They'd be terribly disappointed, Peter, because I know they did a lot of homework after last year and they felt that they'd rec recruited extremely well. They brought the right type of player that they felt was necessary in the last week of September to bring the cup back over the Westgate Bridge. And I'm sure that there'll be a lot of, a lot of disappointed people around Williamstown. Sam, I think the thing you've got to look at is certainly I'm looking at the year that Williamstown have the makeup and the balance in their side to win a premiership. I think the difference between the two sides, this team had a, had a win under its belt last year and, and so had a feeling of what needed, but also that it's that basic discipline to do. See, the players like, and we put it out during the day, like Aziz and Delray, if they didn't do what they consider their part of the game is, which is marking and that, they didn't do anything else. They just stood flat-footed. Now, if you're not marking, you can tackle or you can chase or you can bump someone. You can do all the basics of the game. You can't just get locked into one style. And I think Roundy during the summer is going to have to get those players together and work hard on those basics of the game. I just felt also a relevant factor is that Coburg have been very fortunate as much as they haven't had a great change of personnel for a number of years now. They've, re they've remained intact, they're relatively young, and they've developed a tremendous camaraderie and bond between themselves as opposed to Williamstown who have recruited extensively. And the most difficult thing to inject into a club is that degree of spirit and togetherness that is absolutely crucial to win finals. And I guess the old adage of a champion team as opposed to a team of champion is very, very applicable. Sam, we're going to see you in the VFA next year, coaching? Well, I'll certainly make up my mind the next two or three weeks, Peter. I sincerely, I've enjoyed my association immensely. Who knows what may evolve? And Len, back at the helm at Preston? Well, I'm like Sam. In the next two or three weeks, we'll be making up our mind on that. Oh, thank you, gents. Thanks, everyone. Hope you've enjoyed our VFA telecast this season. Congratulations, Coburg. Well, it's time to test those lungs again. It's time to travel to the grounds once more It's time to go and watch the big man fly Feel the excitement in the air To scream at the men in white Unfair! To cheer your heroes on To win or die Down the race to the sacred soil